Here we go. Hey everyone. Hi everyone who's watching. Uh, right off the bat, welcome to the uh, Scarecrow Video Spring 2022 Fundraiser Telethon. Keep it crowing. <laughs> keep it crowing is our catchphrase yeah. here. That's us for that's us for all day. We're gonna keep it crowing for the next eight hours. Yeah, 12 to 8. Uh, keep this keep this YouTube channel on mm -hmm. um, in the background of whatever else you do, or just watch it eight We're, hours through. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I think on, on our show, Viva Physical Media, uh, on this same YouTube channel, we we uh, told people to, you know, get their parties ready. So we hope some of you are having like a eight hour- This is like a Super Bowl Super party. Bowl Ranger. It's better than a Super this Bowl, too. This is Spring too. Scarecrow <laughs> Super Telethon Saturday. Absolutely. 12 to 8, we're gonna have so many fun things coming up. Oh my god, it's uh, it's like two packs. Like more than we even maybe know about. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's some, and there's some, there's some surprises that are gonna happen. Yeah. Even, Some fun even stuff. for us. And uh, we're we're here today. This is our we do two of these a year. Our fundraising uh, big telethon pushes, mm -hmm. and we're just trying to raise money for Scarecrow Video, the largest and best video store in the entire universe. That's right. And we've been a nonprofit since 2014, and so this is a big part of how we are able to keep this collection available to the public is by donations from viewers like you. Uh, so please, 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 if you are watching this, uh, click that donate button. And any little bit helps. You know, we we don't have we're not we're not, we don't have a ton of like huge uh, every little donations. So little we get, dollar. Exactly. Every, every little dollar. It's basically we have a, a lot of people who give us a dollar every once in a while, and every dollar is is yeah. awesome. And, and we I already got a few dollars. We did already Wait, get a few wanted, dollars. Yeah, let's, really so invest? we've got some dollars already, so we're well on our way. And uh, I, I can't remember off the top of my head what our what our final goal is uh, for the day. So next well, time we're we'll, back we'll on the camera, we will check in with you. Um, but we've already raised $5,348. And for anyone who has contributed, thank you so much. We yeah. do have a few people to give shout outs. Yeah, we have some people who send us notes. And feel free when you when you do uh, donate to send us a note if you want to send us something. We uh, will read it out loud. And I'm notoriously good at reading things out loud. If you watch our <laughs> YouTube show, you know this to be true. So don't worry. OK. Do <laughs> uh, you want to just go one one? OK, I'll go first. Okay. All right. Uh, so this message from Christine. Hi, Christine. Thank you. Uh, it says, our son and grandson visit Scarecrow every week. What a wonderful place for father-son bonding. Wow. I agree. I told That's awesome. <laughs> um, uh, this is from Stanley Addison. Thank you, Stanley. He says, keep up the good work. Aw. Uh, this is from our friend Dan uh, up in Toronto, one of our uh, one of the crud buddies. Uh, listen to their podcast. Good stuff. Backrow. Backrow.com, I think. Yeah, check them out. Uh, and... Uh, Hey, he says, hey, y'all, keep up the great work with Viva and the store. Sending positive vibes your way from up in Toronto. I'll be okay. drinking from my Scarecrow pint glass and watching the stream today. Oh, fine. Oh, yeah, if you have a Scarecrow pint glass, fill that up with your favorite drink, alcoholic and or not. tag us on Instagram or Twitter. Oh, also, absolutely. we're going to be on socials check-in, so feel free to tag us with, like, how you're celebrating. Yeah, send us comments and stuff, too. Uh, Candace and Ted... Candice Lit Litzy and Ted Young. Having your amazing film resources available to us during COVID was a mental health tonic. We could travel internationally via detective series from Italy, France, Denmark, and the UK. We could immerse ourselves in the wonder of nature from David Attenborough's documentaries, view the films of Spike Lee and Pedro Almodovar while watching their creative development over time. Well, that was like a beautiful comment. That was, long, that's so, yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, Andrew says, a donation in honor of Richmond, Virginia's The Video Fan, RIP. Oh. Physical media forever. RIP, and shout out to all the video stores that have ever existed. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, our last one here is from Elliot. A Seattle without a scarecrow is no Seattle at all. Yeah. And I think that's a great comment, too. That's a great way to go out on. Um, and uh, before we leave, I wanted to say that the thing coming up is uh, put together by the Sprocket Society, which is a group that's uh, dedicated to uh, you know, live film screenings and the art of actual film and Brian Alter and Spencer Sundell uh, of the Grand Illusion and the Sprocket Society put this together for us and it's always awesome so here's uh, here's some uh, here's some fun stuff they put together and we'll be back! Bye! Bye. Thank you. 
Just filled with air A single pin Would rip your skin The pin cushion man In the forest there Would pop you both If you don't take care All such trash In the flash I will settle his hash I'll bust right in And twist his chin I'll get rough I'll get tough I'll just call his bluff 
to give you something. Well, that's different. What are you going to give me? This! You ne- <laughs> The pincushion man! Quick, we must sound the alarm! <laughs>
plane. Look, it's a plane. It's a plane. It's Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. I can't go with you, Lois, but I have another story to cover. Oh, that's all right, Clark. I'll see you in the office. a job for Superman.
Ξέφαμε! Superman turns up just when you need him. I didn't even get a chance to thank him.
live right now. We should be live right now. Welcome to the outside of Scarecrow video. To do a little pan up there, here's our, our lovely facade. Uh, Beautiful day today in Seattle. Beautiful Seattle awesome. day. Perfect uh, day to go inside a video. <laughs> yeah, so come on, let's go. Uh, we're supposed to go past here, so. After you. After you. Uh, you so, yeah, this is our store. Welcome to Scarecrow Video. Welcome to Scarecrow Video. Uh, let's give you a little tour, you know, so that we're not just stuck in this uh, the studio space the whole time. We're yeah. going to kind of go into the store, so let's go. Come on. Um, what, should we, what should we talk about here? Well, uh, we have a lot of used and new items for sale, um, and this is all thanks to donations from mm -hmm. people, um, the new stuff is, you know, we don't just have the same stuff all the time. Exactly. Anything that you donate to us helps us grow our collection, whether that is the stuff we're renting out to you, or the stuff that you come in, browse out, and buy all of our Criterion, all of our Blu-rays, we even have VHS in the corner. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, here we go. As you can see, we're open. What's going on? We have our our new Blu-rays, which are growing every week. We get we get new new Blu-rays. A lot of great stuff from uh, from cool labels like Vinegar Syndrome. You know, releasing old older movies too. Yeah, we get between three and four thousand new titles every single year. So stuff that is re-released from the 70s and then you know the newest Marvel movie or whatever just came out like a month ago. We got it all. <laughs> we do. And you might notice that, that some of these uh, shelves look pretty shiny and new. They look pretty fresh. Right? Well that's because we just got done with a with a big project which was repainting a lot of these shelves and so any any bit of uh, any bit of money here helps with that too yeah um, helping us you know do projects like that if you see all these the lights have been fixed well these ones are out right now um yeah unfortunately <laughs> our hot water heater tank is not working yeah at the moment. and those are on the same circuit but uh you know, again, stuff like that. Any, any little bit helps us with, with, with things like that, when things like that come. Yeah, and so, this, you know. this building is so cool, but it is old and requires a little bit of work to keep it going. Absolutely. <laughs> let's keep going. Let's let's look around a little more. So as you can see, if you haven't been here before, this is our this is our director section. All alphabetical by director. We have uh, we have our uh, foreign section over here, which is alphabetical by country. And uh, due to you know from from donations and uh, you know from donations, we've been able to get. What are some of the new sections? We got, we got a lot of stuff um, for Kenya, Ghana, and Nigeria. Are yeah. probably the sections that have expanded the most in the last year. Or two. And I think pretty much all of those were from big, massive donations from people of the movies themselves. So yeah. that's really cool. Hey. Um, so any little bit helps, even money, but also if you know, do you know of something we don't have, and you think we should we should have it as our collection to rent out? Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> um, we have our, our special sections back Ooh. here that are always changing. We have our staff picks. So if you're in the store and you're looking for something to rent, um, peruse. This is like. Our favorite staff. Yeah, so these are our staff picks. Well, let's show off our section. Yeah, why not? <laughs> While we're here. While we're here. Um, you might know that we host a YouTube show called Viva Physical Media every two weeks on, on this channel, YouTube. <laughs> And we have our own little section. So. These are all the movies we've talked about, uh, uh, most of, at least most of the stuff we've talked about on the show. Yeah, so we have um, iconic <laughs> titles such as The Godfather. The Dogfather. The Dogfather. <laughs> and uh, stuff like Mass. The very first show. Uh, Kevin's favorite movie, Millionaire Dogs. <laughs> and there's just all of the Final Destination movies. We got some good stuff in here. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, and, you know, all this is all, you know, this is all part of the whole video store experience. This is, uh, you know, yeah. staff picks. And right now you're looking at our best of 2021 picks as well, which is the whole staff choosing, choosing movies. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's been since 2014. It's been due to fundraising and again, <laughs> viewers like you, donations, and that that keeps keeps this collection uh, here and growing. Again, growing all the time. That's the important thing to remember is that yeah. we're not. It's not a static um, collection. It's always always getting always more. Always expanding and, yeah. and somehow fitting into the space. <laughs> always. 
All uh, the this. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes through, uh, through means <laughs> with like, uh, you know, like the put things in, in books and stuff. So yeah. Um, um, but um, we're also expanding sections upstairs. Yes. All of our different genre rooms upstairs: comedy, drama, action, literature, documentary, murder mystery, the music stuff, animation, psychotronic, sex flow. We are increasing the sections there. We're we're upgrading things from VHS to DVD to Blu-ray. Yeah. And we still do have about. Oh yeah. I wrote it down. <laughs> we have fifteen thousand titles. On VHS, that are only store. on VHS. That are only on VHS, whether it's because that that's it, and they, yeah. for some reason or another, they're not getting a different format, or if they have something special on that format that isn't available anywhere else, we want to keep that available to you. Exactly, and we have a, we have a ton of laser discs even too. Yeah, we have for rent. We have like almost three hundred laser discs for rent. That's amazing. And we we have some used laser discs for sale. As oh, well. we do. We have a lot. So if you have a laser disc player, let's uh, you know. Or if you want, like, just the art uh -huh. on the laser discs, excellent. Excellent. We have a little side of their excellent wall art. So let's head Let's back. go check them out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Laser discs for sale. Grab that. It's actually a two for one day. Did you want to get another one? All right. Very reasonable uh, prices. All right. Well, we heading back in the hole? Yeah, I don't want to. And we're back. And to introduce... Hi, sorry. Switch again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. To introduce what's coming up next, so uh, there you go, there's a little tour. We're going to be out on the floor a little more, uh, our uh, our remote camera thing, that was the first time we've done that, so yes. it's, a little, it's a little shaky, that's... Uh, we were nervous. We were, we were very nervous. We, were, but, we didn't know, there's all these people, there's all these people out there. People are watching us from their homes? <laughs> Usually we're just in this room, just talking <laughs> talking to, to nobody, it's much easier. People are watching us from their homes, they're also donating from their homes. Oh wow. Um, we just got this just in bulletin. Um, to, to read some more shout outs. Okay. Um, so, please read after the door. Um, so we have some donations from Curtis, uh, Mary, Mario, Rebecca, Philip, Kay, and Nisha. Thank you so much. Luke uh, sends a message, says, uh, Scarecrow video is an irreplaceable treasure trove of our cultural heritage, warts and all, not just the anodine highlights. <laughs> They have so much fun, interesting, perplexing, provocative stuff to discover. You can't find it anywhere else, whether you're into, into media as an art or as history. Looking to have your mind expanded or just looking for a good time. Thanks, Luke. Luke. Beautiful comment. Love it. Uh, <laughs> Jen Kugler, we know her, says... <laughs> Hi, Jen. Donating for the movies, of course, and the spring theme telecast, especially Emily's awesome flower print dress. <laughs> Thank it you, is Jen. Awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> uh, thanks to Joan for, for your donation. Uh, thanks, Claire and... Oh, hi, Claire! <laughs> and Simon. Hi, Claire and Simon. Uh, keep it coming, Scarecrow. They're watching in France. Oh. That's, my, that's Sophie's uh, sister and brother-in-law. Hi, Sophie. Bonjour. Right? Bonjour. Bonsoir. All right. <laughs> uh, merci beaucoup. <laughs> oh, merci beaucoup, for sure. For sure. Uh, so, uh, coming up next, uh, we have uh, Museum of Home Video, and they want us to read this. Uh, Museum of Home Video is a college radio for the eyes. It's a weekly found footage excursion for stoners, seekers, archivists, and drinkers. Every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, museumofhomevideo.com. And from their 50 terabyte private collection, they screen talk shows, weird local news, commercials, music videos, and movie countdowns. The thesis is the history of showbiz. But before that, we've got another visit from our good friend Dormarth in Olympia. He's just showing off some more crazy stuff from his uh, horror attic, which is always a good time. So, you know, right on. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's Dormarth here in Olympia, Washington. Just hoping you guys help out with the telethon. And uh, throw Scarecrow video some money. Is uh, they're the most amazing place on earth, largest single collection on earth. They've definitely helped me become who I am. I've bought a lot of shit from them. I continue to support them. They're amazing. Fucking Hales Physical Media, Viva VHS, Viva DVD, Viva Physical Media. Um, yeah, so I'm up here in the horror attic. Uh, I've been asked to show some. Some more of my sections. Um, I'm going to show a section right now. It's not the most wild section as far as like something you've never heard of or anything. 
but it's it's horror so I'm gonna show you the occult supernatural section which is probably the largest section up here so it really shows a lot about horror and you know where it all goes some good stuff over here some of my favorites would have to be Mr. Monsoor stuff from uh, Brazil the ritual of death and satanic attraction he did uh, porn and then he decided to do these two fucking super blasphemous, super gory films. And highly recommend those. Hack o Lantern and Mardi Gras Massacre. Good shit. Shit plot. You gotta have Alucarda from Mexico. Half non exploitation, half straight up blasphemy. Um, got this at Scarecrow Video for a fact. Warlock Moon. Ooh, eleven ninety five. Way back in the day. I got my Philippines slash Indonesia section. It's got the Killing of Satan. The Death Head Virgin. These are the same movie, but two different titles. Black Magic Terror. The Queen of Black Magic. Add a little Kung Fu, you got Ra Force. Then add a little Arlie Ermy and Jan Michael Vincent in the Philippines, and you got Demon Stone. Obviously, you can't talk about occult supernatural without the 80s satanic panic scare. And this is one of the movies. Allison's birthday. Very satanic. The Devil Master. It took me forever to find this. It's a great movie, but there's like three minutes of 90s McDonald's commercials in the middle of this where someone accidentally taped over it. Uh, that was sad, but hilarious. All right, keep on moving. More occult supernatural, some highlights, Demon Rage, Frightmare, I really like the Spellbinder a lot. Oh look how scary that necklace is, it's a fucking boar. Got some made for TV shit from the Dead of Night. Alright, keep on moving. Occult supernatural spills over here too. Invitation to Hell, not the Wes Craven one, but the super fucking nasty, gory, satanic one. Got some old school shit, Ring of Terror, Horror Hotel. Can't have a cult supernatural without ghosts. Everyone loves a changeling. The witching, some fucking shot on video shit. Hell yeah. The Possessed. Made for TV movie about satanic shit, starring Harrison Ford. Back before he was a star. Got one of my favorites, The Jaws of Satan, where a priest goes up against a satanic cobra. And we got some uh, esoteric shit over here too. <coughs> Suicide cult. Uh-oh. It's okay. It's a VHS. It can withstand anything. Snake Hunter Strangler. Booga Booga! The Spectre of Edgar Allan Poe. Last spillover occult supernatural section. Got my camera person, aka daughter, over here. And uh, what we got over here? We got the spell. HBO film Witch Hunt, which is a sequel to some other good shit. Some old respectable stuff. That's good. It's no secret that venereal disease is a big problem. Herpes is in the headlines and syphilis, gonorrhea and the others continue to threaten with blindness, sterility, birth defects and other serious problems. Now you can joke about VD or just ignore it, but let me tell you, embarrassment and ignorance are VD's best friends. So know what you're talking about. Learn to prevent VD and to recognize the symptoms if they do appear.
This is a message from the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. Men pay through the nose with a smile on their lips. It just takes four little words. Fuck, fuck, fuck me. Fuck a fucking asshole. What a moron. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back. Chili. I can put my hand underneath, lubricate it, and you simply bend the handle upwards. This curious pinching movement erupts over all those little holes and starts running down in rivulets. It's rich and dark and yummy. And I want to share with you how French women cope with this thing. The thing that men infuriate me over most. Big fat ones and cream buns. You scoop all the surplus goo from the middle. There shouldn't be any goo. I don't feel that way now because of everything. But please don't ask me to sing again. Oh, geez, I must have a line someplace. Jesus Christ! <laughs> That's an idea. <laughs> But it's true, monsieur. The whole, all this... Let me... Try it again, for goodness sake. I'm Mr. Erg. I'm Mr. Ohm. We, we furnish, furnish the, the current that's, current that's currently in your home. Our only eccentricity is to polish electricity for the cleanest power in the land. You can crack them this way. You can crack them that way. And we've all done this. But no matter how you crack them, you always end up picking out eggshells. Not anymore. Introducing Easy Cracker, the ingenious new product that lets you crack open eggs, separate eggs, even crack hard-boiled egg quickly and easily without the mess. Separating eggs are a hassle, but the Easy Cracker has a special egg separator attachment too. Just place egg in the cradle and squeeze to divide the yolk from the white instantly. Just crack, crack, Crack away with Easy Cracker. Are you tired of the same old boring meal? Then you need the Flavor Pro, the amazing new kitchen miracle that lets you make delicious meals bursting with flavor. Until now, marinating took hours. Not anymore. Simply pour your favorite marinade into the flexible flavorizer, attach the needle, place into the Flavor Pro, and presto! Inject pepper and zesty Italian dressing into filet mignon for tender, juicy steak. Use creamy lemon dill sauce for savory salmon fillets oozing with flavor. Make dreamy desserts, cream-filled cupcakes, and tasty eclairs. Also great for cleaning under and around braces, crowns, and bridge work. Call now and receive the Sonic Clean Between Machine with the oscillating interdental brush, two Sonic toothbrush heads, the gum stimulator, the Sonic tongue cleaner, eight replacement brushes, and a convenient organizer for only $19.95. But wait, if you call now, you receive a second Clean Between Machine oral care system free. Hi, I'm Ryan. Ryan Phillips with a revolutionary new way to unclog your toilet in just seconds. Yes, seconds, with the one and only Mighty Plunger. Just place over the drain, push the button, and the clog is gone. Watch again in slow-mo. It works so fast. When I tell you who's in this next picture, you might expect some offbeat comedy, or at least a little disco dancing. But it's actually a sophisticated adult love story about a divorced woman who has an affair with a much younger man. You taught me not to be afraid. You've taught me more than most girls learn from their mothers. And I'll always love you for it. Just as basic, just as vital, you can't have one without the other. I'm sure you'll hear it sooner or later. The answer is simple. You have to learn what to use and how and when and why. All those bottles and jars and tubes, does that sound familiar? I resented it all the time in the world. And that's where you come in, onward and upward. I'm ready to try it. I haven't seen you in a hundred years. I'm so excited about it. Okay, why not? By the way, tell you what. I guess not. She was natural. So the child raising or movies or books. I'm feeling great. How about Girl Scouts? I'm counting on you. Wasn't that natural and easy? Are one for every working day of the week. What works and what doesn't work. A what? It's always just a rehearsal for the next one and the next and the next because the answer is going to be no. It's good psychology. These exact words. Sure. It's a magic formula. I just don't know when I'd have the time. We all love attention, don't we? Listen to her. Learn from her. Your know-how, your abilities, and your experience. But perhaps most important of all. More women than ever before. Ready, willing, anywhere, at any time. The sparkler. We're going back in time a little. Gosh, Linda, I don't know. Teaching and sharing. Oh, great! So you know what to expect. And by the way, so much more.
to the right person. But perhaps most important of all, let me tell you... Make it yours. You were right. And I also appreciated something else. One, two, three, four. Really? I'll pick you up. That sounds even better. Remember to keep it brief and up to date. That could be me. That could be you, you know. And I want you to make a list of everybody you know. Really? That's always gratifying to hear. Oh, yes, I remember. And it's true. Oh. I don't know. Um. Uh, platino. Platino. No. Uh, uh, plate? No. No, I tried. Uh, yeah. You tried. I'm going to try I it. was married to him too long. <laughs> <laughs> With this tray system, you have to do this, then you have to do this, then shake and shake, then dispose of the waste. Then you have to do this, and this, then this, and finally this. Just simply lift, then shake, and it automatically sifts. Dispose of the waste, put the tray back in place, and watch in amazement as the clean litter simply flows back into the box. Nothing makes you feel more invigorated and refreshed than a steaming sauna relieving your body of excess stored water which may contain toxins. But who has the time to spend in a spa? Plus, the sauna experience can be expensive. Not anymore! Introducing the revolutionary Sauna Pants, the at-home sauna experience that you can enjoy when you want to and where you want to, right in the comfort of your own home. All you do is wrap, adjust heat level and relax. The sauna pants work just like a sauna, creating a moist heat sweating out unwanted excess water around your midsection and thighs. Now you can read, watch TV, or just relax in the privacy of your own home. I want my new baby back, 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 baby back. Burger Time is a great place to work and grow. We pride ourselves on service, quality, and excellence. We apply these core values to our products as well as our team members. We're committed to offering higher starting wages, great benefits, and opportunities to grow. Quality is our most important ingredient in everything we do, and that's why people who join the Burger Time family must be the best. You can get a paycheck anywhere, but at Burger Time, you'll get training, a career, and have fun on your path to success. Deadly Matrimony, next Sunday on NBC. She leaves baby back for the way Glenn Miller plays. Songs that made the hit parade. Gods like us, we had him made. Those, Those were, were the days. days. Men were men. Mister, we, we can, can use, use a man, man like Martin Luther again. <laughs> Didn't need no welfare state. Everybody pulled his weight. Damn, Damn our whole of sour and Wouldn't it be great if you could stop scribbling important notes and still remember everything later? Now you can record it all with Playback Poly, the tiny digital recorder that changes everything. First contact shipping, then send out all the emails. Playback Poly is so small, you can discreetly capture conversations and hear what people are really saying. Did you see the outfit on Betty? I know, it's terrible. Oh, it's so trashy. Playback Poly is perfect for recording school lessons and lectures. To solve the problem, all you need to do is... Or saving inspiring sermons to enjoy joy again and again. Squeezing. Now you bang that down. No, no, no. Bang that. Sorry for that noise. Bang that down with your knuckles to snatch it out. That's my girl. Twist the end of your bag so it doesn't come running up again into your hand. Perhaps somebody will be kind enough to slip one in your stocking. Thank you, my darling. I've split and pushed it up with mincemeat. It was disgusting. Are you girls with school? <laughs> I'm taking stone and violet to... God damn it. If you heard the report on 59 cold cereals by a leading consumer magazine, you'd fall through the floor. Mine's high in calcium. And salt. Salt? High in fiber. And sugar. Sugar? sugar. Lots of protein. And added fat. Fat? Nabisco shredded wheat was rated tops in nutrition. For no added sugar or salt, low fat, plenty of fiber and protein. Nabisco shredded wheat. Nobody else.
I couldn't bear being out of shape, so I exercise and eat and drink good things, like Celestial Seasonings Herb Teas. Celestial Seasonings makes 25 delicious herb teas in flavors you'll flip over. Since there's no caffeine, they're soothing and relaxing and yummy. The nutritionists say that breakfast is one of the most important meals of the day. It helps to perk us up and get us on our way. But there's a kingdom coming that's part of God's plan when God's word is all we need to feed man. No more bacon, no more sausage, no more orange juice, no more coffee, no more biscuits, no more light bread, no more grits, no more scrambled eggs. Welcome back, you guys. Check it out. We're already at $8,434. That's pretty awesome. And what's like, even more awesome is we are able to tell you our goal for the day. Oh, yeah, because we didn't remember before, but it is $25,000, and $8,000 is already pretty good for just being the first hour into the show, but, but we're not going to doesn't mean we're going to slow it down no, at no, all. No, no, no. Keep it coming. Yeah, all day coming. long. All day long. All day long. Um, thank you so much for the donations. Yeah, People who've donated so, much. so far. And thanks everybody who's watching. And thanks for everyone who's coming into the store to rent stuff because we forgot to let you guys know if you come into the store, if you're in the Seattle area and you come into the store yeah. to rent, um, we're doing a two for one special, baby, just like the olden days. Two for one day. Two for, for one day. Just for today, though. In store only. You can't call. Just come in and you do a two for one. Two for Did one you? rentals. 
Yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah. I think I sometimes I get flashbacks. Oh. Hello! Oh. It's me! Yeah, it's Colin Froth. Colin Froth. Colin Froth, have you been living in our walls? I haven't seen you in so long. No, 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 no. I've been, I've been outside a lot. Been outside a lot working on my new show. You have a new okay. show, the, the Electronic Discoveries? No, 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 that one. It's uh, the one where you were hunting ghosts or something? No, 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 no. Okay. I've what, got what now? a new show. Great. Well, well why don't I here. show you the best way to show you? All right, well, yeah, we're not doing anything. You. That's what so. they always say. Show them if you got them, if you know what I mean. All right. Yes. You show me yours, I'll show you mine. <laughs> uh, just a moment. Anyway, yeah, hey, let I guess. Me. I Watch it, check it out. I guess we've got a Colin Froth's new show. Check it out. So check it out. I'm Colin Froth, and I've been exploring the paranormal. But when it comes down to it, we see ghosts every day. They're called people, and they're just not dead yet. I needed something more elusive. It was time to head outside. Australia children shiver in their sheets at the cry of the Yowie. But most folks call it Bigfoot, and the smell reminds us that our present might be less about the future and more about our behind. Ah! Oh god! Ah! <laughs> This is Colin's Cryptid Discoveries. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> What'd you think? I thought you were hunting Bigfoot. Yeah, or are you just out there knocking over regular people? Or are those ghosts? People holding a rare bounty. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, they're not that rare if you're talking about Sasquatch movies. We have a whole lot of them. Oh, do you? Yeah. We oh, you have a few. few, but you don't have anything. Like, look, this, the Port Chatham, Ch Port Chatham Harry Man. Okay. Do you have that? I, I don't, don't know. think so. Yeah, I don't know. There's uh, this Bigfoot hoax video. That's a good one. Okay. Let's see. Uh, that is from the... Oh, you do have that. Oh, oh. Uh, never mind. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 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 well, uh, then it, uh, there's, of course, you know, a wide variety of movies. Movies okay. about yetis. Okay. Yeah, uh, Bigfoot Big Foot. erotic. Okay. okay. Oh, <laughs> that's not that's right. Right. All right. Well, right. We like uh, a little bit of that. Um, what are you going to do with all of these? Yeah. What are we going to do with them? Well, let me just say... 
I've got big plans. <laughs> what the? Oh, oh my God. Hey, 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 let go of me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Give me back my rock a sack. Was that a Bigfoot? Did he just take Colin Frost's rock a sack? I guess. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> And we're back. Well, I guess that Bigfoot stole his movies. It's probably the last we're gonna see of Colin Froth, because I doubt he'll ever come back to the store and interrupt us again, like ever. Probably not at all. At least not later today during this live stream, for sure. Yeah, so back to talking about our video store and the awesome telephone that we're doing today. Right, exactly. Uh, so, uh, I mean, keep again, those donations keep those donations coming. coming in, keep the comments coming in. Um, hopefully we'll get some more that we can, that we'll read out loud. Yeah. Um, keep chatting on the YouTube. We try and tune in when we can. Not right now, because we're, you know, hosting the show. Yeah, we can't. Um, be two places at once. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh so hopefully you've liked all this, the stuff we've done so far. We have a lot of fun stuff coming up ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, check out our website. I think there's a link below our video, how to donate. Um, uh, our goal is 25000 and I, I truly think we can make it. Yeah, and again, if you're in the area, come on by. Two for one. Two, two for, for one. one. Hey. Hey. One day only. Super fun. Yeah. Um, and uh, coming up next, we have a really fun video from our friend uh, Nick, who contacted us on Viva Physical Media. And this is an awesome story because so, yeah, if you watch if you watch me physical media, he sent us a long uh, email. Uh, he op he opened a video store recently in uh, Blackpool in the UK. He um, opened a video store. <laughs> like <laughs> they, these are closing everywhere, and yeah. this guy is so passionate about physical media and movies that he opened a video store. Not only that. He was watching our show and he did it. He was, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so we asked him if he would uh, give us a little tour of his video store and, you know, yes. the video and send it to us for the live stream. Yeah. And he was kind enough to do that. And so here's Nick with a uh, tour of his uh, store in Blackpool, dead format video. So check it out. Yeah. Yeah, right, guys. Uh, I'm Nick. I run Dead Format Video, which is a cult film and retro video store here in Blackpool, UK. Uh, we uh, have thousands of films on multiple formats, everything from VHS and Betamax to Laserdisc and DVD and Blu-ray. Um, it's been my lifelong dream since I was eight years old uh, to open my own video store. I hung out in them as a child and then went on to making films myself and spent uh, many years traveling around promoting my own trashy films. And this year at the age of 43, I decided to open my own retro video store. Uh, we've been open for four weeks now and it's been overwhelmingly positive. Um, but we have everything from say like VHS right up to Blu-ray and 4K. Uh, all sorts of obscure classics like the um, Claymation classic uh, Comic Quest, The Adventures of Mark Twain. Uh, it's always been a favourite of mine as a child. Um, right on to uh, things like, you know, cult labels like Arrow, the house box set. Um, loads of films up here from all over the world. A lot of independent cinema, underground stuff. Um, for instance, we've got some uh, SRS cinema releases like Cannibal Messiah. Um, like proper low budget trash and um, a bit of everything in here um, we rent and sell films um, so you know bringing rental back to a modern audience is good uh, we also like track down hard to find films especially being here in the UK um, there's some stuff that can only be found on import so um, I've got good hunting skills to go out and find these films for people um, but we have, you know, a bit of everything for everyone, from your mainstream movies right down to obscure stuff. Um, another classic here is uh, Thundercrack, which is one of the weirdest films you'll ever see. It's a mixture between horror, comedy, and porn. <laughs> um, we've got uh, Ghost Chase, uh, which is um, Roland Emmerich's first film, also known as a Hollywood monster in the, in the States. Uh, and in other countries, um, it's got pretty much all of the cast from uh, Night of the Creeps in it. It's another classic. 
Um, but yeah, this has been a, a, a you know a passion of mine for years. I set up my own video store in my garage, piece, and I've uh, been collecting films for years. I amassed a collection, a personal collection of over ten thousand films in multiple formats. So when I opened, I started bringing stuff from home, and I've been uh, tracking down other collections to purchase for the store. And uh, yeah, created this wonderfully um, amazing little space. It's only getting bigger. We're getting more and more um, stock in, more more um, shelves in, and it's yeah, it's really taking off. Uh, it's been overwhelming uh, the last four weeks we've been open. Uh, we're situated in a um, in the back of a really well-known horror shop called The Crypt, uh, which is uh, attached to a bar. <laughs> You're good. Are we though? I think I think we'll be okay. Um, welcome back to us. It's the Colin Froth and the machine of it all. It really. Oh, um, so that was awesome. That's a video store that just started. I just hope, opened. I hope they get so much support and yeah. love. And if I was in the UK, I'd go there. Right? Absolutely. If, yeah, maybe if, if I ever am. If, I'm in, if I'm in the UK, I'm going to definitely visit uh, Dead Format Video. Thanks again, Nick. Uh, if yeah. you're watching, uh, hopefully you're watching. If not, What's uh, the time thanks for again. Us? It's probably night there. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like Thursday it's there, it's as there. far as I know. Um, uh, <laughs> So yeah, that that was cool. If you guys also, if you guys aren't from around town, this town, Seattle, <laughs> Seattle um, and you have like a favorite video store that's still alive, or even if you have a favorite video store that has sad, sadly passed away, we would love to get your video store shout outs too. So oh, like, for let sure. us know. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, real. Yeah. Uh, we'll we, we got some we'll more some donations. Um, it looks like... We are now at $9,108, which is so amazing. That's great, just, just during this video. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> See the power of physical media and video stores. Um, we have some some uh, people we'd like to give thanks, give yeah. thanks to. You go first. Okay, uh, this is from Maura. Thank you for all your hard work, efforts, and care preserving and providing equal access to media. We need this now more than ever, and the importance of what you're doing will only continue to grow with each passing year. Sending much luck and good vibes from Los Angeles, XOXO. Thank you. That was a good one. Uh, we got Bryce. Attending Sparkle Society events were some of my first dates my partner and I ever went to. The show's off to a great start. Viva Physical Media in all its forms. Yes. We can't agree more. That's really cute, too. Um, Spencer. Oh, thanks, Spencer Sundell of the Sprocket Society. Speaking, speak of the devil. There we go. Uh, Nathan Andrew. Um, Keith says, in memory of Viva Video, the last picture store outside of Philadelphia, RIP. RIP. Yes. You're in our hearts. Uh, thank you, Michael. For your donation, Samantha, and thanks, and thanks, thanks, Peter, for your donation. Awesome! Um, Thank you, guys. Thanks and so these much. messages are super sweet, and yes. we love <laughs> we love hearing them. We love hearing about how much you guys value physical media yeah. and institutions like Scarecrow Video and other places all over the world. And Absolutely. The only reason that these places continue to exist is yeah. uh, donations from you guys and and our you know our shared passion for movies. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of our shared passion. Of movies and institutions and, insti and great and great institutions. Uh, coming up next, we have a, a short video 
uh, by from our friend Tommy, uh, ex Scarecrow, our beloved Beacon Cinema, Tommy at our beloved, uh, Beacon Cinema. Um, and he put together. Uh, later in the show, we're going to have uh, the director Brian Trenchard Smith showing up, uh, and he he was doing some hosting. He hosted some movies at the Beacon last night. Tommy put together uh, this this video. All I can say is it's it's actually pretty, it's pretty messed up. It's a it's a cut down of well he'll introduce it. Basically, for you. what we're going to say is it's, Tommy put together a video. So you Tommy put together be a video. To Tommy put together a video, and it's uh, it it goes dark. But uh, anyway, but here's well, Tommy. <laughs> and go check out the Beacon. Definitely check out the Beacon. Hello, Scarecrow video. Tommy Swenson from the Beacon Cinema here. Been asked to provide another short video clip for your edutainment as part of this Scarecrow video telethon. And uh, thank you very much to Scarecrow for asking. Uh, I've selected this time a, a, a cut down of a longer short film in celebration of a special guest who's in town this weekend. I believe he's going to turn up on this live stream live shortly. But uh, let's, let's give him a little bit of extra love here. We're talking about Mr. Brian Trenchard Smith, the great Australian filmmaker who's responsible for such wonderful films as The Man from Hong Kong, Dead End Drive-In, BMX Bandits, uh, screening last night as you're watching this was Stunt Rock and Turkey Shoot, a.k.a. Escape 2000 here at the Beacon Cinema. The, the tonight of Saturday, as you're viewing, will be Frog Dreaming and Day of the Assassin at the Grand Illusion Cinema. So it's not too late to get down there and catch Mr. Trenchard Smith in person. But he's really uh, the, one of the leading lights of the Ozploitation wave of the 70s and 80s. And unparalleled as far as uh, is featuring, celebrating, um, endangering, lucky not to have killed... Stunt performers. He's one of the great directors of stunts in movies. And uh, what we're going to view here now is uh, an edited version of an industrial film that he made in 1978 called Hospitals Don't Burn Down. Uh, this was commissioned as uh, a piece of like fire safety uh, educational film. So it's, you know, viewed in schools or public places and uh, really is meant to teach you don't smoke a cigarette in a hospital. Don't toss a cigarette down a garbage chute. Um, and once the hospital is on fire, get out as quick as you can. Don't go to the roof. But uh, the characters in this film are not aware of any of these lessons, and the way this goes is quite unfortunate. This is a pretty legendary industrial film just due to how completely over-the-top, shocking, and traumatizing it is. Because you, you have a hospital full of the most you know, innocent, lovable children, old people, uh, hard-working healthcare professionals, all being engulfed in an inferno of horror. So uh, imagine, that, imagine you're seeing this like at school and you're a little kid, or it's on TV and you're thinking that you're sitting through some sort of Sesame Street-style piece of, of edutainment, but in fact you are given a, an absolutely horrifying action movie of just flames, fire, falls, and screaming death. So uh, I've cut this down from what was 25 minutes to about seven minutes. You lose all of the character stuff where, you know, we actually come to know and maybe care about the people in this hospital. But what I wanted to feature here was just a glimpse at how completely insane it is to, like, to take on an industrial project with this much uh, gusto, this much uh, reckless abandon and willingness to just completely traumatize everyone who watches it. So enjoy this little taste of Hospitals Don't Burn Down. It's a bit choppy. We, it's, it doesn't flow completely well. That totally makes sense. But you do get to see uh, what, what, what a, a real filmmaker can do when given maybe a boring assignment, but brings all of his skills and all of his enthusiasm to bear on something very simple and turns it into something completely unforgettable. So enjoy this version of Hospitals Don't Burn Down.
pull it out, Mr. Hilton. They're your lungs when you go home, but while you're in here, they're ours. Shut that bloody door. to the stairs. Do not panic. I repeat, do not panic. Sister, the stairs are clear. We can go down. What happened? There's one more child in the ward. I'll get them. I'll stay where you are. I'll be all right. Sister! Come back! Sister! Come on, I'll help you. Keep up! 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 Keep up!
chin back. I know, I know. The fire is now 31 minutes old. A hundred firemen from 12 stations will fight it. It will burn for six hours. Nine people will die. <laughs> Sorry, sister. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that uh, completely horrifying, devastating, depressing, and gutting look at the day in the life of a hospital. Uh, smoke me if you got him. Thanks. We back. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, sorry for those of you who were traumatized oh, hey. by that fire video. <laughs> but later on, we can ask Brian Trenchard Smith all about it. See if Do you, you think he'll light us it. on fire? Boy, I hope not. But if he, if we do if he does, I hope we we do it safely and not in here because I think that would be bad. Yeah, that would, that's not something we then we would really need a lot of donations. Yeah, but so we also we, really yeah, need a lot of keep donations. An eye, keep an eye on the, the channel. <laughs> we might need a little bit more than Ooh. what we're asking. Um, we have an exciting guest. Mm hmm. We do. We how are we gonna lead into this? Gonna be... We're just gonna bring we're just gonna bring him up. Gonna bring uh, up. And actually, okay. we're not the experts in in this uh, this. So uh, Leo's gonna come up from behind the camera and actually do this interview with our good friend John Portanova, uh, who well we'll just we'll just let uh, we'll let Leo come up and inter yeah. introduce him and stuff. So All right. We're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna take a step back for a second. I'm Leo, and uh, there's been a lot of Bigfoot talk around Scarecrow of late, and so why not have on the person who has proudly hosted our Bigfoot section, made a Bigfoot movie, and has a lot of Bigfoot knowledge, Mr. John Porter. Hi, Leo. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, so, there's rumblings here at Scarecrow about Bigfoot. Yeah, I think I've been hearing some weird stuff, been seeing some things of... Yeah, I thought I saw something earlier. Yeah, what, what is that? What is that? Well, what did you... Oh, God! We have another special guest here. This is the nice. Bigfoot from my film, Valley of the Sasquatch, a.k.a. Hunting Grounds. Hunting Grounds. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I don't know if you can see that table there, but there he is in all his glory. Nice. <laughs> How did you end up with the head from it? Um, well, basically, we... We're a low-budget film, and so we had a new Bigfoot suit made by Doug Hudson, um, who does some awesome effects. He worked on things like Jumanji and stuff like that, making creatures. And so when you're doing low-budget things, something that you have to do is make deals with people. And Doug wanted to have a new Bigfoot suit for some commercials. He had done spots for REI and things like that where Sasquatch would make an appearance, and that was yeah, yeah. Doug's suit in there and a mask that he had made. And so with part of our budget, he was able to make a new suit, make a new mask, and he wanted to use the suit for future commercials and things, but I said, okay, but we gotta keep the head. Our movie has to be the only time you see this Bigfoot head, this beautiful nice. visage. Yeah, so you're keeping it distinct here. Exactly. Uh, so it's got very realistic fur. Uh, hair, fur. Yes, um, and I bully threaded and on the Bigfoot suit as well. And I think it was in the downtime of someone who was working on Terminator Genesis. Don't quote me on this, but I think I heard Doug say, oh, the person who threaded the hair for us was working okay, on Terminator. Not, not the hair from somebody no, in no, no. Terminator Genesis. <laughs> they didn't okay, shave anyone that was, from that production. Okay, no. okay. <laughs> that, would, that would be an interesting 
just, uh, be a good chip in. Exactly. Uh, well, it's a very nice, realistic uh, mask, and you can see it in the movie Hunting Grounds. So what, how was your experience making a Bigfoot movie? Uh, well, it was awesome. It was something that uh, I kind of always wanted to do. been a fan of, uh, of Squatch since I was a little kid. Uh, Harry and the Hendersons really inspired me to get into, you know, reading as many Bigfoot books as I could, you know, hanging out in the, like, 001 section of the library, looking at all the paranormal stuff there watching other Bigfoot movies, um, and there was a lot of uh, true stories that I had read or seen referenced in documentaries that I kind of wanted to thread a narrative around. So there's a few uh, true stories like the uh, attack on Ape Canyon where the miners were attacked by a group of Sasquatch, or the story of Albert Ostman who was kidnapped by a Sasquatch for a night. Um, and so I kind of took my characters and the drama they are going through and wove in these real stories that had kind of fascinated me for years. Nice. So integrated them in there. So, um, so what movies did you research? Like, did you have any stylistic references that you were going for? And they don't have to be Bigfoot movies. Like. Yeah. Um, well, one thing that you can see from the mask here is that it is, in fact, a mask. We wanted to be able to see the performer's eyes, and so that was something right from Harry and the Hendersons. I still oh, think nice. that Rick Baker's... Uh, Squatch in that movie is the best that's been on screen, and Kevin Peter Hall's performance is awesome, and a lot of it yeah. comes from the fact that you can see his eyes. Um, yeah, that movie is unsettling in how <laughs> you, at some point in that movie, cease to think of it as being a creation and just start accepting it as a character. To me, yeah, like when I watch that movie, I don't think at a point that I'm watching somebody running in an outfit or watching a CGI thing or something like that. I'm watching it. Harry. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's no, pretty for amazing. Sure. It was great, and it's that's why I think uh, it did such a good job that when most people think Bigfoot movies, they might just think of Harry and the Hendersons and be like, well, that's Bigfoot movies. Yeah, yeah. They don't know the, the history of all the other things, like the Yeti movies or the docudramas and the horror movies, all that kind of stuff. Um, but as far as stylistically, another thing we wanted to do was sort of keep it realistic, um, as realistic as you can with the Bigfoot suspense movie. Um, and so a lot of that went into the visuals as well. One movie that me and my cinematographer, Jeremy Berg, would reference was uh, American Graffiti and how it had kind of a uh, documentary style with the lighting. The, the blacks are black. When Terry the Toad is getting freaked out in the field, it's just blackness behind him. Um, it's not it's not blue like a nice, you know, Dean Cundy night or something like that that we love. Yeah. But we just thought, okay, we're kind of treating Bigfoot a little more realistically. We're telling a dramatic story. Let's uh, try to light it so that it sort of uh, feels like, you know, maybe something a little more documentary style, yeah. even though we weren't making a mockumentary, which a lot of, like, 70s Bigfoot movies were. Right, right. And a lot of found footagey new ones that, definitely oh. go that to that trope. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's great that you bring that up because it's been so many years since we made this. I mean, we filmed it in 2014, so it's eight mm -hmm. years ago now this summer. And uh, it played in festivals in 2015. The discs came out in 2017. So it's been a long time since we made this movie in the world of every wide release horror movie had to be found footage. So when we were like pitching this around to people, like investors, producers, things like that, one thing we would say is, so this is a Bigfoot movie, it will not be found footage, because every Bigfoot movie coming out at that right, time, right, right. and some of them are very good, uh, they were all found footage. And we, yeah, we were just kind of sick of that style at that point. But it's been so many years now since that was like the prevalent thing in the genre that it didn't even really occur to me that it's, uh, you know, we were being out of the ordinary by not being found footage. Nice. Um. Well, I was going to give you a little information since you are the host of our Bigfoot section. You, yes, you, uh, very proudly. You donated proudly, <laughs> so he's one of the people that's keeping Scarecrow open. So with that in mind, now it would be easy to say, well, Scarecrow shouldn't spend all its money on Bigfoot. Well, fair, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, there are certainly, you know, other things to be purchased, too. But, but maybe that is fun. But I make the argument that we could take something that's fun... Northwesty, mm -hmm. like in a lot of ways, also uh, has a lot of do-it-yourself qualities to it. It's also a lot of movies that are going to be lost because a lot of these things are passion projects. And so, with that in mind, I've had the idea and and working with other people that we're going to start a thing called Operation Bigfoot. And the goal of Operation Bigfoot is for us to have the biggest physical media collection of Bigfoot movies in the world. Anywhere That's to be amazing. found and have them be publicly available. Yeah. So it's a, it's a little crazy 
The second goal is to take that idea, which is more of a personal crusade, maybe, <laughs> and uh, and use that to leverage people donating to what would keep that open, which is Scarecrow. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try and raise more money by doing Operation Bigfoot for the store than we spend on Operation Bigfoot. That's the idea. Is we're going to try totally and totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So have money come in, but then have it fund other things and have a lot of fun along the way. So, uh, so check it out. We've got OperationBigfoot.com, which right now is pretty placeholdery, but we're going to start opening up stuff and having some events. And you will find, I think, that your proudly hosted Bigfoot section doubles or triples in size. Wow, that's so great. So it's going to get nuts. Um, and it's also just going to be a fun, a fun adventure to go on. So. Sounds awesome, and I think uh, the idea of using Bigfoot to help support Scarecrow is a great idea because the Bigfoot fans are so passionate. I mean, exactly. I've gotten messages as recently as two weeks ago of people saying, hey, loved hunting grounds, uh, asking some questions about it, um, and they were actually looking for a Blu-ray copy of the film, which even though we just came out, like I think of it as like a brand new movie, it's out of print already. Now, it is something that Scarecrow has in their collection, and all of these other big film movies you'll be able to collect would live forever. It doesn't matter if, you know, a small distributor only printed so many Blu-rays because the filmmaker, me, insisted that there had to be a Blu-ray, um, and then they let it go quietly out of print, you know, five years later. Uh, it will always live in this Operation Bigfoot collection. Exactly. So, it sounds good. <laughs> uh... Let me see how we're running on time. Sorry, since I'm the time regulator as well. <laughs> we're doing pretty good. So, um, let me ask you another question. Do you have a favorite Bigfoot movie? Uh, I do. Uh, my favorite Bigfoot movie is Abominable from 2006, okay. also known as Rear Window Bigfoot. Um, and it is a very fun movie that has two of the patron saints of Bigfootdom, Matt McCoy and Lance Henriksen. This is the only movie they both starred in. Got They've it. both individually been in several Bigfoot movies. Um, so maybe the Operation Bigfoot website could have some pictures of them up there, um, something like that. <laughs> I like Abominable. My weird thing about it is why does it have red glowing Sisida eyes? <laughs> so it's a terrifyingly weird, squatty... Uh, it's a, it's an odd it's an odd choice. It's an interesting like, looking creature. Uh, <laughs> well, I think a lot of the stories about Bigfoot that you'll read, people will say red eyes, but I think what it is is they're shining a flashlight. It's, yeah, it's, it's like dark a in the woods. Of yeah, animal. exactly. When you see a cat at night, it's got totally. It's like a raccoon in the woods, uh, and got so it. it sort of made it so some filmmakers are like, okay, well, Bigfoot has red eyes, which exactly. yeah, that doesn't exactly make sense. What I love about the creature in Abominable is it's a practical suit. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like Stacy Keach. <laughs> and those big, okay, those now I hadn't gotten that out of it, but I will say late period Stacy Keach print, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. And those googly eyes My are camera. part of it. Yeah. And um, one thing that is sort of interesting with Abominable uh, is that is a movie being made in 2006. They actually finished it in SD. I learned all this from the Blu-ray that came okay. out a few years ago. So they finished the movie in SD. They had to redo the entire timeline, rebuild the whole movie when it came time to make it in HD. It came out on Blu-ray maybe like four or five years ago. And they redid the eyes with CGI. So when you watch oh. the Blu-ray version, oh, I have or, or when you see it streaming, it has these CGI eyes with like little tiny pupils. That's what they wanted to do. And it's uh -huh. an interesting idea, but when I rewatched it in the lead up to this whole Bigfoot uh, uh -huh. you know, soiree we're doing here, uh, I made sure to watch the standard definition version, which is also on the Blu-ray, okay. that has the original bulgy station. I saw it in the <laughs> theater, so I had no, weirdly enough, I saw it in a theater with only one other, my friend and I went in and it was just an empty theater, <laughs> and uh, the theater hadn't received like a promotional poster or anything for it, so somebody had hand-drawn a Bigfoot and put a bottle bowl on it on the theater entrance, <laughs> That which is was, awesome. uh, which was and I believe I've heard this story from your friend. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I think uh, CB is who you saw it with? No. Oh, I then saw it with my friend CB. Kevin. So. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, or he went and saw it because me and Kevin went and saw it, and then he went and saw it. Got it. I remember hearing that, oh, Leo saw Abominable, no one was in the theater, because I was extolling its oh, praises. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, local filmmaker CB Shema uh, told me that uh, Abominable was not good and that I was silly. But uh, I think it's very fun. We can have a debate about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm torn. I think the eye thing threw me off, but I will give it a lot of credit for throwing a ton of plot in. 
<laughs> which yes. is amazing because a lot of a lot of the movies don't have so much plot. That's true. The more movies can just be, you know, kill scenes with the uh, Sasquatch rampaging for no reason, exactly. which sort of doesn't make sense. Like, we think we would know they exist if they're just leaving dead bodies everywhere they go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the family movies will just be, like, goofy scenes of Bigfoot with sunglasses, Bigfoot with the Walkman. Right. And, yeah, so plot isn't the strong suit of uh, Squatch cinema. That's true. Yeah, and you would think there'd be more sex tapes leaked if there were all these Bigfoot erotica ones that have been coming out. So that's a thing yeah. like... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Kardashian with a Bigfoot or whatever, you know, whoever, uh, you know. But not yet. Not yet. It hasn't not been yet. released yet, but Operation Bigfoot will dig it up if it exists. It could. It could. All right. Well, I think we should wrap it up and let these uh, folks get back to doing their thing. All right. Um, but thanks for coming in. That was yes. great. And uh, we're going to make you proud with that section. Thank you. I'm very excited. <laughs> love Scarecrow Video. Love the Bigfoot section. And I think I might be the only person who is sponsoring a section that has their movie in it, which is uh, one of That's my proudest nice. moments is when I saw that. <laughs> okay, if you are watching and you've sponsored a section and you have a movie in it, yeah, this is know. a challenge. <laughs> or if you're watching and you made a movie but we don't have it in our section, that's a challenge to get it in our section and then sponsor it. Whoa. That's very complicated. Yeah, okay. that's a good one. <laughs> uh, all right, well, thank you so much. All right, thank you. <laughs> Let you folks come on. Wow. Look at this. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, uh, thank you, John, for coming oh, yeah, on so and talking about Bigfoot. Um, nope. If you guys haven't checked out our Bigfoot section, it's upstairs in the Psychotronic room. Um, come on in, rent John's movie, see what else you you can find in that section, um, Pacific Northwest, a lot of Bigfoot action around here. Uh, oh, and we have another guest coming up. I just stared directly into the light, so I can't see anything right now. Kevin, would you like to just, I mean, I don't really need to read anything, because we got Justin here from the Air Clutch. Yeah, we bring up our good friend Justin. Come on up. <laughs> we all know Justin. We from, know Justin. We all know each other from way back. Way back when. Way back, back when. How are you? Doing yeah. good, doing good. Just thought I'd come by, say hi to you guys Bye. and stuff, and give a donation on behalf of Air Clutch. Oh, what? Wow. Private rental. Yes. So, oh. For, um, someone, 15 of their friends can come into the art lodge, um, popcorns included too. Awesome. Um, they can watch whatever we're playing or they could rent a movie from Scarecrow and bring that's, it down. That's great. One, uh, the art lodge, one of the great other great independent theaters in Seattle. Talk about the Arc Lodge a little. Uh, how did you How did you come to be in charge of the Arc Lodge? Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, being in the theater business for a while, I um, started over at the Metro Days with Kevin over here. Yep. And, um, and then Sundance and then with me. Sundance <laughs> with me. So, We're family. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a family. And so, um, it's, it's all uh, just a giant family. Every movie theater person knows everybody. So, I've, I've known David for a while, and so when I moved back with my family from California, I started over there. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful old building. Mm -hmm. It was was it a like a Masonic like. Yeah, lodge, actually? Uh, yeah, really? 19, 19, 20, so. 1921 oh. is like a Masonic Lodge, and which is funny, I actually brought these little Arc Lodge <laughs> pins for you guys. Oh my gosh. Because I know you guys are both vaccinated. Yes! Um, so, in uh, paying homage to the Arc Lodge, the um, Freemason temple that it used to be, um, we're going to start like a little secret um, type of thing too. So instead of, because we always require vaccination cards yeah. still, and masks yep. still, and we're going to do it yep. for the foreseeable future. Um, so that is a way to kind of expedite yourself of showing your vaccination <laughs> card. That is You'll have tight. it on, so it's like a little secret yes. little thing. So. We know you're a regular oh, that hang on, hang on. The theater whenever it comes in. Okay, so. hold it up again. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's there we so go. Awesome. There you go. I'm a big fan of pins and So, bones, yeah. So. Get, get vaxxed and get part of the, become part of the uh, secret club, yeah. the, the Arc Lodge. Yeah. Which is a great theater. I was just there. I just watched uh, everything everywhere all at once there. That's, That's also where I watched that, that too. Good. Yeah, yeah. We, we currently are doing like a 
multiverse at the Ark Lodge, so you can watch everything everywhere <laughs> at once, or you can watch Doctor Strange. That's true. So. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Also, Columbia City's great. I live down there. Beautiful, awesome <laughs> neighborhood full of amazing people. Check out the Ark Lodge yeah. while you're down there. Also, the Beacon, the is, beacon is also right down there. there. Too, yeah. Um, just, just, you saw Tommy on the on the live screen. Yeah. Stream earlier. So and, for uh, this private rental, um, I believe what we're doing is anyone who donates gets entered into a raffle mm -hmm. for this private rental. So. So. If, if you donated, yeah. If you needed another the, you're reason, in the, you're in the running. Yeah, if you haven't donated yet, throw Do throw some money. You're in the you're in the running to for a private rental of the Ark Lodge. Again, a beautiful old theater down in the beautiful old Columbia City. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. You you know, anything? You want to plug anything else? Yeah, yourself? summertime. Uh, we're bringing back chocolate popcorn, so we'll be here to stay. So that'll be Excellent. in July. Um, also, we're gonna have ices. Too, so okay. We're yeah. Try to make the summer a little cooler. Margar yes. Margaritas? Um, well, it won't be margaritas because we are still family theater. True, true. But you can add a soju shot into. There we go. So, okay, yeah. okay. We'll, that's we'll still, we'll that's still what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, awesome. Yeah. Um, Any, anything else? Do you have any, like, I don't know, what's, what's, your, what's one of your favorite movies that you could probably rent here at Scarecrow? Yeah. Uh, favorite movie I would say is Ghost Dog because that's just my favorite movie <laughs> in general. Nice, and, so nice. that point. and then I'll say favorite anime that I actually just re recently rented the first two discs and I need to get the second two. I'll probably get them today. Is <laughs> Shirin Toki. It's a good animated film. So he's a martial artist that uses his fist only and goes through like the progressions of the century changes with different weapons and stuff. So oh, yeah. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, find, find both those titles here at Scarecrow. Thank you so much, Justin, for coming yeah. on. I totally forgot the big I know, there's just this guy here. here. Hey, it's my favorite friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, guys. Justin, thanks for stopping so, by. It's nice to see you, you again. No, definitely. I'll see you out there. Yeah, I'll yeah. see you. Okay. All right. <laughs> don't, don't leave yet. <laughs> Thanks awesome. for the pen. I'm, I'm excited to be part of the, uh, the secret club. The, don't yeah, lose yeah, it. hell yeah. Um, so we. This is a cool pen too. I think it's <laughs> we have some live music coming up. Oh, we do. That's our next. We thing. do in a bit. Okay. So let me. Let me check. So yeah, we have a lot of fun stuff coming up. We have <laughs> things like live music. We have more guests that are gonna come on and talk to you about how much they love movies, how much they love Scarecrow and physical media. Yep. Um, we are gonna be reading a lot more donations. Absolutely. Yeah. Once we get some. Once we get some another once bump, we we're gonna more. get some more some more uh, messages from people. Well, who do we? Let's let's just since we're since we're here, let's just say some of the stuff we have coming up later to make sure people keep you know stay tuned. We've got uh, David Schmader coming on. Yeah. To do a talk. Yep. Um, he's gonna chat with us for a bit. Okay. We um, have our unstreamable oh, friends from The Stranger, uh, Jason Jazz. We've been on every live stream we've done. Yeah. We've done five of these now. I yeah. Think, and they've been on every one. Constantly. <laughs> Um, we have yeah. we've got Brian Trenchard Smith showing up at some point. We have this really good podcast. They're called Suspense is Killing Us. I haven't heard of them. They're, they seem, they're one of my faves. They're going to be on. It seems, it seems, it seems shaky. I, really I, cool guys. I doubt, I doubt if they're going to show. I doubt if they're going to show. <laughs> well, I don't we'll trust see. them. That's why the suspense is truly killing us. The suspense killing is killing us. us. Um, I do, we do have coming up at like around 3.45 an interview with uh, the great uh, Canadian filmmaker John Pays that I reported last week. And it's only going to be shown this one time. Big time. Request Fix that. from him, so we're so check. So make yeah. sure and stick around for that when that and, comes And um, stick around because in about 20 minutes we're gonna open our first beer. <laughs> yeah, that's that's so right. That's gonna happen. <laughs> um, but until then, uh, what are we? Well, I mean, keep, we're here to tell you about how awesome Scarecrow is. What do yeah. we got? We have over. How many titles do we have? I don't know anymore. Sure. I used to say like 120,000. Mm -hmm. Now it's like 135, 145,000. You're, you're going to have a little bit of time. Um, um, so um, I might see if I can sub something else in. Sorry. Uh, but go ahead oh, and for right now do the merch run. Behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, merch run. But, um, but yeah, we've got all these titles. Uh, a couple things. Now, this is not the the final. This is the final design, but it's not the uh, what it's actually going to be. You're going to get this. It's going to be bigger than this. Somehow. But this is a... Uh, our, this our, is our limited new edition Scarecrow T-shirt, and we'll have better. There's a better picture of it up. Uh, we'll be up on our website and social media and stuff. I assume. Well, this is what you should do. Um, Can he wear it? Yeah. There you go. Oh, oh hang on, hang on. Let me get this. Uh, um, better get this shot. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Live TV, folks. And no, that's what's. That's, 
<laughs> that's the, the magic, magic of live TV. That's the magic. Um, um, so, so yeah, we're gonna have this a beautiful shirt, the design um, by, our, by uh, Will, Will Long again. Um, and uh, these are going to be for anyone who donates one hundred and fifty dollars or more. Uh, you get a shirt. You get, and, they're, and they're and they're gonna be they're gonna be limited, be actual shirts. They're gonna be limited edition. We just don't have the actual shirt set due to supply chain stuff, which is you know due to uh, just, just due the, to, the due gear to, that we're look, due living to the in, things. You, the world that we're you in. Get it. You know. Uh, on a similar note, we're going to have um, some new stickers, some bumper stickers. Again, these okay. are uh -huh. these are the pieces of paper. But this is what it's gonna say. <laughs> It'll look like this, but on but the back, sticker. but on the back of your car, hopefully. So when you drive around, people will all know. Or on you your lap. Some people put it on laptops. Yeah, laptops. Some yeah, people. Sure. Oh, if you put it around your water bottle. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You could even, if you're feeling so crazy, go to the tattoo shop <laughs> and just like. Oh my god. Ask for the wrap around. Yeah. That's what you say. You go, can I get the wrap around? Yeah. And then like that. Or, I mean, get your arms down. It'd be perfect. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. Anything you decide to do, tag us. Tag us uh, at Scarecrow Video, Twitter, and Instagram, or send us an email. You know, we haven't done live tattoos on any of these. Uh, I keep wanting to do streams. it. I will do it if we get the the. We'll figure out who okay, if who we will figure do it. out who will do it and how to do it safely and legally. Yeah. I mean. If anyone wants to tattoo me on live TV, <laughs> let me vet you first, but I, I will probably say yes. No, no vetting. If somebody shows <laughs> no up today... Vetting. I don't want to know your name. <laughs> uh, somebody shows up today and wants to tattoo Emily, but we have to get we have to get to a certain amount. We have to get to at least... We have to get to 20,000 before that. And it has happen. to... I, I'm not going to just let, let you tattoo whatever you want. That's not, well, we'll see. My mom's watching this live stream. Oh, She's like, yeah. Oh, no. God. So definitely not. Um, but yeah, so we got a lot of fun stuff ahead of ahead of, ahead of us. It's mm -hmm. only we've only been doing this for two hours. We have so much more, you guys. We're here till seven or eight or longer. Who knows? Do you guys want to go on a little walkabout? Yeah, let's go on a walkabout. Sure, let's go on a walkabout. I'm gonna okay, uh, give me give me a minute to get the masks on in the um, a walkabout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me grab my ruck of massage. <laughs> um, yeah. Should All we, right. We How's this? Walk? this Again, live TV, folks. Love it. We love it here. It's it's got to sort it. itself here for a second, but then we'll be able to go. Uh, good, 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 good. Should we go talk to the people? Let's go see. Let's go see what's going on out here. Let's go talk to the people. Could uh. Listen to hot takes. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll see Um. But look at this guy. Yo, he looks great with that T-shirt. That's for sure. All right, we are okay. up in uh, Roven, Roven here. Roven Dangerfield over here. <laughs> we are Roven yeah. Dangerfield. Roven Dangerfield. Oh, we're Roven. We're on we'll walkabout. We are walking through we the store, and we are going to see. Oh, there they are. Perfect. Can go in the murder, murder, murder. Here we go. Here's our uh, here's our goal, and this is our this is our final goal. Today we're trying to get to twenty five thousand. Final goal is actually seventy five thousand. So today's only the beginning of our fundraising efforts. So we are not done after today. So just keep them coming. But please think of today as when you should. Oh, today, definitely. Mm -hmm. but, but all the time. We're going to keep it crowing. We're going to keep it crowing as the big sign. Uh, all right, where do you so want to go? Let's, let's go over here. Let's go take a look at the, uh, some of our, some of our sections or whatever. Yeah, so we got the bang section. This is our action section. If yep. you didn't know, we got all the CSIs, your Magnum PIs, your diehards, and all of your... <laughs> your Keaton's cop, etc. Is this where Hargate lives? This is, yes, yeah, she lives, she lives behind the wall in one of these, a secret compartment. You can find some really cool VHS tapes here, uh, Bare Knuckles looks like a good one. That's a great, that's a great have cover. Have you seen it? I have not, so it's a great cover. There's some good covers here. I mean, yeah, this is, this is a classic cover, Blue, the Blue Knight with George Kennedy. You know, can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. I mean, maybe you can. I haven't seen the movie, but you can't go wrong with that cover, at least. 
Uh, we got Day of the Survivalist. Check out this cover. Very Ooh. cool. Very cool. Nice. I mean, now we're just going to show you things. Commando Squad. It's nice. Almost... <laughs> Dang. Now I'm just, now I'm just, see, I'm just browsing. And You're I just rooting here. through the stacks. That's rooting. true, we're just rooting through and the stacks. And that's like what you kind of, you know, you get with a video store. You can do this. That's what you, you can, can do here. Ugh. Oh, I don't know about that no. one. It's just so damn. That one back. Yeah, um, still, <laughs> a night of terror. Oh, this recently showed at the the Grand Illusions uh, VHS Uberales show. Oh, yeah, check out the VHS Uberales for Absolutely, sure. Absolutely, which I think is next Saturday, so check that out. Yeah, uh, always check that our own, out. Our own uh, Alicia Betty. Yeah. Watching. Hi. Hey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Should so. we go back down for now? And yeah, maybe let's we'll come back up later and show you guys some more sections. Whoa, whoa, okay, I'm going to look in front of me instead of looking behind. <laughs> okay. All right. Should we make our way back? Yeah, let's head on back. Head on back. Can check on the band. John, bye. Hi. Thanks for having me. John's, yeah. late. John's on his way. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get your food in front? Big foot eyes in the back. Oh, good, good. good. All right. Good. Um, so we're going back into our little. Into our, little into our, into our here. beautiful studio. I think it's really important to show behind the scenes stuff like that because, you know, it's not all uh, magic and. It's not all magic. Right, you know, like big city here. It's true. You know? Now you're back on this guy. And um, maybe next time we'll actually take you, uh, take you a little back behind the scenes at Scarecrow, yeah. back into the back into the actual. Maybe stacks. we'll bother some of our coworkers. Who oh, are, we uh, definitely. Working. Oh, we definitely should. We definitely will. We definitely will. We definitely should. Um, so do we? We have some live music now, right? We will. I keep doing this, and I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, uh, <laughs> what I'm going to say is let's check out uh, Greg and Megan's thing. So oh, we'll yeah. jump ahead a bit. Okay. Yeah. So we have, uh, coming up, we have some uh, some section tours. We were just doing some highlights, some tours, but there's a little couple highlight uh, tours from our our friends and coworkers, Greg and Megan. So uh, Greg's going to talk about some anime. Megan's in the hanging out in the plays section. So, uh, yeah, give it a look. up in the animation room, which is one of my favorite rooms at Scarecrow Video. Uh, and uh, what I'm actually going to show you is the live action manga section. So here we have a bunch of titles uh, based on anime that is actually live action. We have Nana. This one is actually an RBA. It's a $200 deposit because it is really hard to find. Uh, but this is a great film. Um, and I actually saw this initially when I was in Japan. This one I have not seen, but if you notice, it's a different person playing one of the Nanas. All right, and then we're gonna go up here. So again, I spent some time in Japan, so when I was there, I saw this movie, Azumi, which is very good, about an assassin, a female assassin. Um, and again, there's a sequel. Also pretty good, actually, um, but not quite as good as the first one. Most of the emotional impact is in the first movie, and the first movie has a bit better bad guys, I think, too. Of course, there's also some great stuff in just the animation section as well, and I'm going to show you one of my discoveries right now. So we have to go near the bottom for this. Let's see, we have Star Blazers. Um, now, this was originally called Space Battleship Yamato in Japan, uh, and you'll see that there are three series. And the thing about this is the Quest for Iskandar, that's the best one. That's the first series. And they dubbed it and took out some of the violence and also have this weird section where one guy dies in a plane crash. The next thing he's like, luckily I jumped out of the plane before it crashed. And that's total nonsense. That was just done because stuff used to be censored back in the day. Um, Comet Empire is pretty good. Those both have the same voice actor, so it's dubbed. Uh, but then they got a completely different set of voice actors for the Buller Wars, which I actually like a little better than, than the Comet Wars. And just to make things more confusing, um, there are also uh, a bunch of movies that come in between uh, Season 2 and 3. And if you go above it, Jake Yamato, so we have In the Name of Love here, which is between uh, Season 2 and 3. Three, I believe, and I 
think some of these are actually just condensed versions of the anime. Um, before Yamato. Oh no, this is also, this is the second movie. Yeah, so this is uh, after the Common Empire as well. And then I think these two, I have not seen that one yet, or that one, but I think that one's just based on the series. And what's interesting about these is you notice they have Yamato on it, so these are actually, you can get uh, the subtitle version, which is a bit closer to what the original Japanese series was, uh, and they don't edit out all the violence. So, next time here on Scarecrow Video, uh, check out the animation room. There's a lot more to see here. That's just a small sampling of stuff that I've discovered in this room. Hi, I'm Megan. Today I'm in the literature room and I'm going to talk to you about an overlooked section, and that is the plays section. So some of the stuff in this section uh, you would think of as a play first and a film second kind of play fences, um, you know, done by playwright August Wilson, who was a native of my former hometown of Pittsburgh. But this film is kind of contained, you know, it's, it's shot within a couple different locations. And you could kind of picture it being on a stage, uh, and it's a great story. Definitely recommend. Uh, Viola Davis is amazing, as usual. And then uh, you have some surprises in this section as well. And one of those is uh, Beasts of the Southern Wild, which you would not think of as being based on a play, but it was a uh, one-act play. <laughs> And this movie I think of as being completely outside, being filmed completely outdoors in the Louisiana Bayou. And it just has some amazing imagery that's very fantastical. And the story it kind of exceeds the boundaries of what you would think of as a stage or anything like that. Um, just has some amazing acting as well. And uh, yeah, I love this movie when I saw it. And then there are some kind of hidden gems in this section, too, uh, like Bell Book and Candle. Uh, it's a movie that I only found a couple of years ago after having heard about it for a long time. Uh, and it's Kim Novak, Jack Lemmon play brother and sister who are uh, witches and warlocks. And then uh, Jimmy Stewart plays their neighbor. And I don't know why I didn't watch it before, because those are all my favorite actors. Uh, but it was released in 1958, and uh, it was kind of during the jazz scene, beat scene. Uh, they live in New York City, and uh, they go to this jazz club that's for witches and warlocks. Uh, and I think that if I could go to any fictional setting in a movie. Uh, it would be that jazz club. <laughs> I would just spend all my time there because I love Halloween and, and witches. So that's it. Next time you're in the store, come on up to the literature room and take a look at the plays section. Hi. Hey, everyone. <laughs> we are back. Artists are unpredictable. But you know what? Uh, you know what is predictable? What's that? That Scarecrow is going to be here with all of these movies. <laughs> Absolutely. Ready for you to come in, browse around, rent them, purchase them. Yeah. Just like look at them with your eyeballs and feel them with your fingers. I mean, yeah, just, you know, I mean, we've given you a glimpse. We'll probably jump out in the in the uh, the store a few more times yeah. uh, as we go. We're, uh, we're on our first of, of our Rainiers for the day. So. so if you're also waiting for us to start with our beers, you can crack them now. Go ahead. We've given you have you have our permission to go ahead. It's two o'clock, yes. I think. It's two o'clock around. Right. It's near two o'clock. Um. So yeah. And the only reason that Scarecrow is a, a stable, I mean, as stable as we can be, like a, a familiar, a good, steadfast. There's words that I want to say, but I can't <laughs> come up with. Is because you guys are out there and you're donating and you're given five dollars or you're given fifty dollars or if. You are a wealthy, kind-hearted individual. You give a little more, mm -hmm. and 
times are tough for everyone, you yeah. know, but you do what you can for the things that you love and the people that you love and the ideas and the passions that you love. And so that's why it's so important to keep places like Scarecrow Video going uh, from your donations. And you can feel proud that you're the one doing it, you know, not just someone else is making Scarecrow stay. It's like you, you are part of it. I, yeah, wow. So, you, I got this, don't worry. You said it all. Yeah, keep, <laughs> keep going, I don't know, I'll just, hold on. Hold on let me get a, let I just gave my first sip of rain here and I was just like... A lot, of, uh, a lot of confidence there. Yeah, so please <laughs> no, but, continue right. to donate. This is, I mean, you know, we're all having fun and we're hanging out. It's also a telethon, it's a fundraiser. We're, we do have a goal of $25,000 $25, today. Yeah. Um, so we would love for your donations. When you donate, leave us a little note to read on the air. If you want to tell us your favorite movie that you've rented from Scarecrow. Oh yeah, that'd be great. That'd be really cool. Or a recommendation, because we're gonna shout it out and, and tell everyone your recommendation. We'll, you know. Yeah, yeah, and if you're not, I mean, if, if you're not a Scarecrow shopper and it's not like who donated to, uh, you know, who, who uh, rented, if you rented it here, Jesus Christ, words. One sip of Rainier and I'm like, <laughs> If you haven't rented anything like, here, okay. tell us your favorite. Tell us your favorite uh, movie, just in general. Yeah. Tell us your favorite. Your favorite movie that you rented at a video store. Again, shout out video stores that are still alive. Video stores that we've lost. You know, ones that yeah. are RIP'd. Um, um, if you donate, uh, if you just send us twenty five dollars and you ask us, I will give you um, a recommendation based on your favorite movie. We'll both give you a recommendation. How about that? And again, twenty five dollars personal recommendations from me and Kevin. Absolutely. And not to forget, uh, don't forget any any amount that you donate, you're entered in a lottery to win in a raffle to win the um a, a private, private party. party. And this the is in there, I think it's called the Prestige Room. Have you been in there? It's so cool. Oh, is that it's the like, one with the couches? With all the velvet couches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I saw Moonlight. Okay, actually. it's you and all, <laughs> pick, imagine if you will, you <laughs> and all 15, 14 of your closest friends yeah. for a total of 15. Love you're it. all vaxxed. You're ready to watch a movie. You can bring your favorite movie, rent it from here, or mm -hmm. uh, Justin will rent it from here, or something that they're already playing, like Doctor Strange or Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, and, and you can watch in there, and it's really fun. Absolutely. Um, oh, oh, it looks we got, like we, we have... Got some, oh, we got some notes. Yes. Excellent. And we have a new total, oh, we have a new total. If you want to write that down. I'll start on the notes. So, shout out to Troy Barber. We love Troy. Hi, Hi Troy. Troy. Emily, thanks for chatting with my father-in-law the other week. I don't think I told you this, Kevin. Oh. Thanks for chatting with what? my father-in-law the other week when he was visiting Scarecrow on his Seattle vacation. Wishing you, Kevin, and everyone else all the best. I'll pick up my t-shirt in about nine days when I make my own <laughs> pilgrimage. Awesome. <laughs> so we'll see you soon. Oh, well, we're going to meet Troy. Yes. <laughs> I um, yeah, I met his father-in-law. Oh. I forgot to tell you. He was really sweet. He's like, is there an Emily here? And I'm like, hey, wait, hi. Um, this is our new total, 10,345, your handwriting. <laughs> I, um, I know it's not great, the handwriting's not great, but well, we might 10, do a thing later where if you, if you donate, Kevin will write your name. I will write your name, if you donate, I will, yeah. I, I request that I write your name, uh, and uh, it'll be great. Yes. It's always a fun party. So we're at 10,345, 10, that's amazing, let's keep, let's keep it going. You could also, I'm... You can probably, can you call another store and donate that way? Do people, is it actually like a telethon? I think you can. I mean, I mean we're, we're not going to be like, I'm oh, sorry, no. Like, yeah. if you call and you're like, I would love to donate. Yeah, we're not going to say no. Yeah. <laughs> so do that if you want to. Um, Jeff? Yeah. Jeff. Jeff, Jeff donated. Thanks. Thanks Jeff, Jeff didn't have a have a note, though. And ben Nason. Hi, Ben. Oh, our, old, our good friend, Ben Nason. Love and miss you all. Keep it growing. Oh. Thanks, Ben. Jonathan King says, here's to my favorite survivors, Videodrome in Atlanta, Georgia, and good old Scarecrow Video. May they always beat the odds, Jonathan. Ah, yeah. Hell yeah. I know Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Yeah. Follow him as, uh, I was going to say his uh, Instagram handle, but now I can't remember. Archivist King on Instagram. He's always he's posting, he's always posting all the stuff he's watching. It's some great Ooh, that's stuff. That's right. Movies and stuff. Yeah. Um, and all in good stuff. Andrew Toms, ex-Scarecrow. Uh, alum. Oh yeah. Scarecrow alum Andrew Toms. What do you say? Sasquatch looks like he needs a back. A backyotomy. Back <laughs> what the fuck is backyotomy? It's two o'clock. says I need a backyotomy. It's from some movie. Nick always quotes it. <laughs> Tell us in the chat. Whatever. Yeah, Andrew, let me know what the hell movie that's from. Uh, is it from? Is it from Zoolander or something? No, it's not Zoolander. Like? Okay. Which is a great movie, also. Um, Chris look, look, Loman, look. Tubular, and Jason make Rich wear the Bigfoot outfit every shift. 
Look well, what we found. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Wandering around Scarecrow. Oh, wow. Oh, Hi. <laughs> How's it going? It's going great. Uh, hold on. I, I wasn't prepared. Oh. Yes, we don't have to this. rush you. <laughs> no, no. So, we've got a guest coming up. Uh, it's a friend, David Schmader. He sent me this to read. I didn't have time to memorize it, so I'm just going to read it. Probably a lot of you already know just from the name, but in case you don't, he's a longtime Seattle arts writer, essayist performer, performer, and the common law husband of showgirls. Paul Verhoeven's 1995 stripper drama, which he's hosted screenings of all over North America, supplying the commentary track to the Showgirls DVD, which you should definitely check out and listen to. I had a dream I watched Showgirls last night, which is so, which is so weird. <laughs> His forthcoming book is called Filmlandia, and it's a poppy yet knowledgeable overview of Pacific Northwest cinema from the slender thread to singles to sweetheart deal. I haven't heard of sweetheart deal. Just it. Came out with Sif. <laughs> anyway, put your hands together at home. Or raise, or raise a drink for David Schmader. Come on, come on. And we're just going to talk to you. I don't know. <laughs> I know how to talk. How's it going? Good. It's been a while. Nice to talk about here. this. Right? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let you guys for the... Space. You don't want to... You don't want to... Okay. <laughs> just Emily's got to... Okay. Emily wants to sit down, so... I'm doing my interview, so that's why I got off. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's all uh, good. Uh, how's it going? Good. Um, thanks for thanks for doing this. I lack a beer. Oh, I'll yeah. get. <laughs> it's no, it's true. Emily's getting a beer. That's Emily's getting why, a beer. Our, our, our schedule's been it's been knew. shifted around a little uh, due to uh, you know live TV. What are you gonna do? So otherwise we would have we would have <laughs> had had like three beers ready for you. <laughs> Made me pound them. We, do you want to start? Do you want to start before you get the beer? Or should, we just, should we just stand I, here in silence before? I'm until functional you get a without beer? a beer. <laughs> me too, but after two o'clock, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, you, so you've been working on a book. True. Uh, let's talk about All right. Filmlandia. Yes, it's, um, I wrote a book, f it's from Sasquatch Books here in, in Seattle. Publisher of the Scarecrow uh, movie. Uh, the way, the <laughs> Sasquatch, you know, that's the whole theme. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so I, they came to me a few years ago and said, Will you, would you like to write a book about weed for us? Because I also love weed. Me too. Yay. <laughs> And I said, yes, and it went well, and then they said, well, would you like to write a book about movies? I'm like, that sounds great, too. <laughs> so, um, and it was right during the pandemic, so I spent the pandemic watching 240 movies and calling it Pacific Northwest Cinema, and for our purposes, that means um, movies made in, set in, or featuring as a character Seattle, Portland, Pacific Northwest. Awesome. So, so did you kept you kept it to like this co the coast area, or did you go deep into Washington? Because I yeah, know like anything some... Washington or okay, okay, cool. Not Idaho. No, no Idaho. Too bad because making Griffith's first movie is just over the border in Idaho. Off hours? No, the, oh, the, wait, very, the very first uh, one. The, First date for choking. Oh, I haven't seen that one. You I have it. I got it from, the first from, you, one. from you. Well, I'm gonna watch I it. I learned it from you. That's good. Thanks for the recommendation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because I, I, I remember you were coming in for quite a while just with these giant massive snacks <laughs> every, every week of, of movies. Yes. So it was great. It was, it was helpful. Um, and uh, so, yeah, and so the title Filmlandia, I guess, play on. Uh, I don't know what that's a play on. Just kidding. Can I ask you? Yes. Hey, everyone, I'm back. All right. <laughs> Thank God. Life of the party is back. Uh, so, so we have our, our YouTube show, and uh, we I stumbled upon this this movie that was set in the Pacific Northwest called Joyride. Have you seen it? No. It's uh, 1977, directed by Joseph Rubin with uh, Desi Arnaz Jr. and Melanie Griffith, Robert Carradine, and it's about uh, these these friends who go. They're, I think they're going to Alaska to fish yeah. or something, but they're from It Seattle. starts off in Seattle. It starts off in Seattle, but... like, kind of like a trip. Uh, and it is so it? good. We do, we I, do have now it. Now I know I can see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so it's kind of just like how their how their lives are entangled with each other. And then it, it kind of turns into a little thriller action towards the end, it's, too. But it's it's, it's, it's really a solid good. It's a solid movie. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Is there a car chase? There's a couple there, car chases. I think there are okay. some car chases. This town inspires good car chases. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Joyride. A lot of a lot of Here's uh, the cover. <laughs> a lot of rain ear drinking in that movie too. Uh, yeah, true. So like, and a lot of flannel. It's it's a very quintessential Pacific Northwest uh, <laughs> discovery from '77. So what um what are some what were, if you can give off the top of your head? Yeah. What were a couple of gems? Gems that you, were that you discovered that 
some of them are going to be based on my kind of weird limited restriction where I, wa I spent the 90s only watching movies where Bjork was executed at the end. Oh, okay. So like, I always saw... Okay. So one movie. Terrible... Well, I only watch <laughs> suffering art movies. So things, uh, when I say things like, I'd never seen Say Anything, and what do you know, Say Anything is beautiful and perfect. It's great. Um, so like, that was a surprise to me. It's not a surprise to anyone else. Okay. Um, but but the that's one, good. Yes, no, for sure. And there were a couple of those. The ones where you're like, I'm sorry, but Sleepless in Seattle has its magic down. Like, think it so? figures out some basic chess moves of the rom com. Where you're like, God damn you, it's happening to me. I care. Um, and the one called Late Autumn that I got from here, it's not the, there's not the 19, who did the original Late Ozu. Autumn? Yeah, Ozu. Not, it's not the Ozu film from the 50s. It's from 2014. It's a Korean Japanese US production filmed here. Um, Is it a remake? N nope. Oh, it's okay. a new story. Just it's a woman who is let out of prison for a day because it's her mother's funeral and a gigolo and they just they ride the ducks, they go to Seattle Center. They oh have, my god, it's like Ride a, the Ducks cameo in there? It's like a before sunset <laughs> with Ride the Ducks. And they fall in love on the ducks? <laughs> Get out, okay. That I'm was in. the only thing missing from before sunset. I was like, I was like I'm like, I'm like five ducks? stars, actually minus half a star, no Ride the Ducks. Know. You know they don't have those in Paris? Bullshit. Come <laughs> bullshit on Paris. Le canard non. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to everyone in France who's watching. <laughs> there are some. Uh, I know. Apologize more. Yeah, how do you say it in, <laughs> Tran in French? Désolé. Louder. Those in the back. Mm. Just kidding. Look, I don't want to get too off topic here. <laughs> All right. um, um, yeah, so those are the big surprises. Let me think if there's All anything right. else. Um, horrible surprises were... Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. yeah um, enough. Jennifer Lopez. Yes. A so Michael I have, I mean, film. I haven't rewatched that since it's, I think I saw it in theaters, okay. and then I don't think I've watched it since. Did you guys ever cover that for your we, podcast? We did cover it on Suspense is Killing Us, and it is. It has its moments. It feels like one of those movies that, like, this could be good. Her haircut was cool. But it's not. Jayla looked good. I think, it, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it just doesn't quite, it doesn't quite, <laughs> no, it doesn't quite work. It's also one of those movies, we do, we, we've covered that a lot on, and you might have noticed that where uh, people, fly into Seattle, characters fly into Seattle, and then it cuts to them taking the ferry to yes. Seattle. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that watching all this, because there's always that shot where it's like, because it's such a beautiful shot of that, so, and most people don't yeah. know. And then we're in Ballard, and then we're in wherever but, else. But yeah. it's always people flying in, they're like, on a plane, and then the next shot is them on the ferry going like, ah, oh, look, we're going to Seattle. You're like, that's not how, we just get on the freeway. Sorry to anybody who thinks that you you know, take a boat to, into Seattle or whatever. I mean, you, 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 you just, you just get on I five. I mean, yeah, you could do that. <laughs> um, I was thinking about your podcast because there's a lot of overlap. I was like, oh, these are uh, when I would see your movies that were coming up. I was like, oh, you guys have had to see a lot, a lot of suspenseful Seattle movies. Yeah, yeah. Did you watch Frankenheimer's? 99 and 44 no. percent dead. I mean, we have not done that on the show they yet. They blew but up the school it next yet. door in that movie. They blew up what? That school next door, right <laughs> down the road. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, no, that's that's blow it up. We don't know about it. The one it. across the street from the oh, you know. the University Heights Center. Yeah, they blew it up. Uh huh. I damn you, Frankenheimer. <laughs> it's a good movie. Like, it's one of the, there's a, this whole kind of little body of movies like McHugh mm -hmm. and that are just like dirty Seattle street crime and then an yeah. awesome car chase. Good Revenge with Stalker Channing is a really weird one. Okay, okay. Um, that, this wouldn't be, has, has anyone else here seen Cinderella Liberty? No. Okay. James <laughs> Con, yeah. It's the James Conn movie. It's this gritty, off the boat, um, down in the... the down in downtown in the piers of just like shore leave and he has a <laughs> hooker romance and um but it's there's this thing where uh, this theme of like cassavetti's light that kind of spread <laughs> among things where it's like oh we're allowed to just hang out and act like ourselves and make a movie right and not everyone's really great at or editing it in, into something yeah that's meaningful. true and i got to see a few of those like because i would make an actor anyone who an actor who saw like Altman or Casper, like, why don't I get to just hang out? And right. One wants to take a swing at that, and it doesn't always add it, up. It's harder to do than it looks. <laughs> yes, right. and that's a C Cinderella Liberty was like this <laughs> baby Altman, all cute. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, when's the book coming out? Next spring. Okay. Right? We yeah. think? Sure. <laughs> if there's a next spring. Next spring, we think. Oh, if there's a yeah, next we'll spring. So. Look forward to it. Um, it's also worth pointing out that keeping with our theme today, it's coming out from Sasquatch Books. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's another Sasquatch yeah, yeah. Books. Sasquatch Books, which again published the Scarecrow, the out 
out of print uh, Scarecrow movie guide, and also Sasquatch has been showing up a lot today, and will continue to, it seems like. I mean, stay tuned, Offstage though. Voice says that that was Offstage Voice Matt Lynch, <laughs> later to come up in the podcast, in the uh, show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Matt's hanging out back, back over here, too. Say hi to Matt, everybody. Uh, oh, I meant everybody at home. Well, yeah, we can say hi to him, too, I guess. Uh, <laughs> say hi to Matt. <laughs> um, what, uh, tell us about the Showgirls thing, because I, I feel like there's like maybe some people who don't know about the Showgirls it's, thing. I mean, I know. We, weird, weirdly, because it's, but I think maybe it's like, it's been a few years since live shows and stuff, too, so you probably haven't right. been touring I around. Did, I, the last one I did here was like last year I did two shows in okay. July. There, that little window... At the beginning of July, when we thought maybe something, I got it right in here <laughs> yeah. for the show. We all felt the normal for like one night. Um, yeah. So the Showgirls yeah. thing, I didn't see it when it came out because uh, I was voting with my dollars, and I was just young queers like, I'm not gonna go see them. Don't pay them for the misogynistic crap movie. Right. But then in 1999, my best friend Mindy, um, who's like the big art influencer in my life, uh, said you have to watch Showgirls. You just have to watch Showgirls right now. And I went and rented it. It was a uh, a VHS, of course, at that time, and like within six minutes, I understood why she was bossing me around. <laughs> it blew my mind, and then I had friends over and gave a little speech about this, and we watched it, and they invited me to do it at Northwest Film Forum, and then I was touring it around at film festivals making fun of it. The joke was I got a call from MGM on my answering machine, and I was sure it was going to be a cease and desist, <laughs> and it was... You're right, and they invited me to do the commentary track. I was like, awesome. oh great, now it's official, and now I get to tour around, and it's still happening. I got, um, I got flown to a gay, to perform it at a gay wedding in Canada, and I thought it would be like the, the bachelor party, or... No, it's the ceremony, right? Yeah, no, like, they, had, they rented a cinema, they had did their vows, and then they made everyone sit down and watch Showgirls. I, I love, <laughs> that sounds I like something that. Matt would do. That is... <laughs> <laughs> that you, is confident. Were either of you here when I did it out in your I was here. atrium? I don't think I was. Okay, that was fun. That was early on when I was... For, through all of this, I've never made a master copy. I still do it by hand every night. <laughs> I've done it like 10,000 times, but I just don't want to phone it in, man. No, no, you don't <laughs> that, want like, to. That remote is my saxophone. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, um, what's your favorite scene from Showgirls? <laughs> um... Oh, that's hard to pick. It's... You did good, kid. Real good. Um, must be weird not having anybody come on you. <laughs> that one. The, the tender family. That, the, 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 they always just will reach for some vibe you didn't, would never imagine yeah. before. And like, that we were supposed to have like tender-hearted goosebumps when her pimp just likes her dancing. <laughs> just one tear. Um, one tear coming down. And that... that he took, You know, the scene, he turns very... Yeah. You know, portentously and delivers the most ridiculous Just, line you've ever heard. Yeah. He, there should be a special Oscar for whatever made him capable of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen Showgirls, you know which scene he's talking about. If you haven't, watch Showgirls. Right? Yeah, what are you doing? It's, it's, a, this is the it's push a, you need. It's a ridiculous masterpiece. It's by Paul Verhoeven, who, you know, I mean, even his bad ones you should check out, because, come on, even Hollow Man. Yeah, honestly. we have a Verhoeven section at Scarecrow, so just literally just go through the whole thing, that's fine. But listen to, but listen to David Schmader's commentary on the Showgirls DVD. Yes. Uh, what else are you working on? Um, kind of just fi finishing up uh, the film book, and then I'm starting a new project, uh, just for a book I want to write about my mom that I've been waiting to do. Uh, me and my mom, yeah, and... I've been working the hell off for this year, and it's about to be summer, and I just want to have a summer. So yes, I'm gonna read again. Do. Remember reading? I've been uh, trying to I've more, been, I, and it's it's like oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like oh, going yeah. to the movies when in I, your brain. When I was little, I used to read like ten books at a like a fucking time, like a stack, and now it's you know it's harder, but it is satisfying. Just gotta uh -huh. pick the right books. books. Roll. It is, books rule. It is so hard. Physical media, though. Physical media is the Physical best. Physical media, it's true. We do a book club segment on our show. Yeah. And, you know, so we'll, uh, let's maybe yeah. Oh, yeah, you guys your, do that. Uh, your, your book. All right. Your book. Uh, so, uh, film, Filmlandia. Yes. Filmlandia. Filmlandia. Get off our tongues. <laughs> um, and the old book was called Weed. Um, also goes well with movies. That's uh, true. Sure. Um... Uh, Okay, what's what's uh, one of your favorite movies to get stoned to? 
Oh, yeah. Original oh, recipe hairspray. Ooh, yes, original <laughs> recipe for sure. Have no. you gotten stoned to the John Travolta ones? You got it. I though. saw it. <laughs> you got it, though. I saw it, so yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, th- th- okay, about that. I, uh, John Waters came in, was a town hall, and they had me interview on stage. Uh, and this was more, this was an audience question, but this is why I was there. Yeah. An audience. Of course, as wonderful Seattle, I was like, how can you work with John Travolta, a Scientologist who's anti-queer? And John Waters was like, that movie wouldn't have gotten made without John Travolta. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) He's like, I like to keep the freaks close. Like, bring your weird people close to me. I want to look at them. And just this idea of like, I don't, I don't, it was, I was about to leave Seattle and I was thinking about kind of that sensitivity that I feel like is common currency up here. And then in other parts of the country, like, oh. You know, maybe sometimes you're gonna be in a restaurant with the Trumper, and you, I did, up here, I would be like, I have to leave. And it's like, yeah, I like how dare, how dare, yeah. I like in this thing of like, don't be, being able to withstand more germs of yeah. that I don't agree with, rather than getting more fragile. And John Waters talking about like, sometimes you have to work with people you don't agree with to get shit done. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> For yeah, sure. Exactly. For sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anything else you want to plug? Any other any other movie recommendations? Anything? Have either of you seen Everything Everywhere All at Once yet? Yeah, I've seen it twice. Okay. It's my favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. All right. And Did it work on you? I haven't seen it yet. It worked on me. Okay, I can't wait. It's my favorite movie of the year. I'm well, planning to see it a third time. Maybe tomorrow, because I, I actually have a whole day off. It's not my favorite Where? movie of the year, but it's really good. What's your favorite movie of the year? Um, Jackass. Not, I always say Jackass, Jackass forever, forever. <laughs> and I'm like I'm like 90 percent being honest. Um, uh, I just I just don't think it is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's early. I don't want to give it that. Yet. Yeah, I even though s- I already gave that to Jackass. <laughs> in like February. I will say this: it is definitely uh, the best multiverse movie that's in theaters. Let's say that. Let's say that. Uh, Where's it playing here? Arc Lodge. Okay, no. Well, we just let's plug Arc Lodge let's because play, play Justin Lodge. was just up here in Columbia okay. City. I need an Arc Lodge experience. Here. Yeah, um, yeah. Donate. You'll get entered into a raffle to have a party at the Arc Lodge. Um, okay. Any any last words? I mean, not like <laughs> last before, 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 before you leave, not, you ready? not like last words. <laughs> oh man! Don't kill right. me. Are my last words? <laughs> I like your T-shirt, by the way. Thank Actually, you. I want that to be my last words. <laughs> don't kill me. What do you me? want on your tombstone? <laughs> Stop. Uh, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought this was going to be Excellent. fun. Excellent. <laughs> uh, everyone look forward to Filmlandia from Sasquatch Books. Sasquatch? Sasquatch. Sasquatch, I like Sasquatch, Sasquatch I Books? Like <laughs> <laughs> Sasquatch. <laughs> it's only going to get looser as it goes, fellas. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thanks pleasure. for coming by, David yes. Schmader. Uh, and I can say a full name. Thanks for coming by, David Schmader. Mr. Um, Schmader, thank Mr. you. Mr. Oh. Schmader, sir. Thank Charlie you for, Brown. Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> you're you're good man, Mr. Schmader. Um, uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. This is the first time we met. And I, I think. Okay, I'm gonna walk and now, over and introduce. Oh, now we have a uh, now we have a band. Well, let's, we were supposed to have four. All right, I'm in now. Great to see you, Kevin. Nice seeing you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for being here. Bye. There's more. All right, we're going mobile. Right. I'm following you guys. So, uh, all right. Welcome to our studio. Hey. Hey, everyone. Here they are. We're doing live music. Um, ladies and gentlemen, soft boys. Uh, Hi, folks. <laughs>
Desperate. Yeah. <clears throat>
That is great. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Thank you. If you just tuned in, we're called Sock Boy. Don't hit the scarecrow. We love that. Okay. So it's in. Scarecrow this Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys again for coming in and Thanks playing so this beautiful much. music. Awesome. Have a good rest of your Saturday. All right, Emily Camp. Bum 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 bum.
Boom, 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 Emily Cam. Huh. <laughs> All right. That was fun. We should do more Emily Cams. Well, we got a whole show to do. Oh, still. Why not? Why not? <laughs> uh, we have. We probably we've only had one beer so far, so. I know. I, I know, wish I ever had two. Well, I mean, after two, after two, maybe it's Emily Cam. Yeah. Um, so we have some more special guests. Yes. We have from uh, one of the greatest little newspapers in town, The Stranger. Um, we have Chase and Jess from like, Unstreamable. Again. Yay. Have you guys have been on all of the shows? Yeah. Really? yeah. That's yeah. really cool. All totally, the live streams? Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, I uh, love coming on. Um, well, thanks for coming by again. Uh, tell everybody about Unstreamable yeah. for the people who don't, who are watching this that don't know, like us. Uh, yeah, so my name's, J I almost said my name's Chase. I'm Jazz, this is Chase. <laughs> I'm Chase. And together we write Unstreamable, which is a column that, uh, you know, looks at uh, films that aren't, and TV shows that aren't available to stream on any major streaming services. Um, and we have a really big collection now of, of titles, I think 350 or so. Okay. That's a been, lot. Yeah, we've been there to put together a book. I know. You know, hey, if you want to give us we've a book deal, it. yeah, we've certainly pitched, pitched it. Well, there were some people from Sasquatch Books here just a minute ago. Yeah, oh, wow. darn it! Oh, next time. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you have a list somewhere? Yeah. So if you go to thestranger.com/unstreamable, you'll see all the individual columns, but then also the master list. Um, which redirects to all the different films, and I like what I mean. We started doing it because we just like to come to Scarecrow, yeah. and we were like, okay, Any how excuse, really? how yeah. can we get away with writing about this every week? And it's so we awesome. concocted that idea. But I do think it's really helpful if you come here a lot, or even if you're ordering online, you can just go there and be like, oh, this is something that's a lot harder to find. Totally. Um, or just even like, I don't want to pay like six dollars on Amazon to rent this or something. Yeah. Which like, give us your six dollars. Exactly. Yeah, give them your six dollars. Well, I mean, for real. Yeah. You know? um, um, so what uh, what are some some recent picks? I mean, I see you've got some in your hands, but what are some recent picks that you that people can read about on the, the thing that like that like you know for your I call it the scarecrow uh, the, the scarecrow, scarecrow column. column. It, is, it is the scarecrow column. <laughs> it's yeah. essentially the scarecrow column, but unstreamable is a great is a better time. So. Yeah. Well, we just this week we wrote about Pink Flamingos, which is still unstreamable. It goes uh, the John Waters really? Pink Flamingos is usually unstreamable. Oftentimes during Pride, it becomes streamable. Um, it was streamable on Criterion. Channel, I think, Last Pride, and they're releasing it in this, like, the end of June this year on, like, a whole new fancy Blu ray. Um, so it likely will Is be. Because Criterion, Criterion put out. Email yeah. 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 Are they doing people emails? They, yeah, they're doing yeah, yeah, people emails. Okay, it's announced, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they're dropping it at the end of June. Mm -hmm. And so it likely will become available to stream, I think, in a few, like, in a month, probably on the yeah. channel. Um, but it's, like, a great time to be like, I mean, that's a title that's crazy because you would think that would be very easy to find. Yeah. And if you're a super sleuther online, you can, but the quality is not, you know, it's not what you want. Yeah, yeah. And, no. and maybe you want to be legal about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And I think a recent pick that I've done was Velvet. Goldmine, which is a Todd Haynes film yeah. about, it was supposed to be a David Bowie, like, biopic, but David Bowie's like, I don't want you guys to do it, but it oh, still wow. is, you know, for the right. most part, and it's yeah. such a beautiful, um, like, well-acted kind of meditation on, like, the, like, glam rock era of London, and it's told in a really beautiful, very gay way, and the costumes are incredible, mm -hmm. and I, great. yeah, I watched it when I was, like, still in college, and it, it, I loved it so much, I became, like, a really big <laughs> fan of, um, you know, Christian Bales in it, uh, Jonathan Reese Myers, it's a, it's a good, good film, yeah. not, not streaming. Hugh McCracken? Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. he plays Iggy Pop, like, an Iggy Pop character, lots slash, of like, Lou young Reed. bodies in that. <laughs> yeah, like, lots of, like, bi, you know, like, Pop stars hooking up with one another. Um, it's cool. It's great. Oh, excellent. <laughs> So you guys have some stuff you picked today. Yeah, you got today. some picks for today. Yeah. What do we got? Um, we were just talking about this recently. I love yes, Poison yes, Ivy. Yes, yes, I know yes. you love Poison love it. Ivy. Um, it has Tom Scarrett in it. It has Drew Barrymore. Yeah, um, yeah. And Tom Scarrett is like creepy in this. Like <laughs> very, very creepy. Um, and I love, I just I love the vibes. I, I know, right? I was actually, I forgot it was Tom Scarrett too. And I rewatched it and I was like, oh, okay. Um, so a Seattle connection there. Um, and it's very, you know, murdery. 
suspenseful. There's a lot of great rain in it. So Sarah Gilbert, my crush yes. from Roseanne. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sarah, yeah. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah and Drew. I had a crush on her in this movie. Yes. Like so the cool. style of, and their their hair, the slow motion when car crash scene. But maybe now. <laughs> See this movie. Yeah. Come here and rent this movie. Yeah. And there's like three sequels. I would not necessarily recommend. Second one sucks. <laughs> yeah. Not Bad. necessarily recommend them, but this one great. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> uh, and then I have a classic of uh, body horror seven cinema yes. crash which is like feels like a huge movie to me personally but um it's not streaming uh I, criterion actually did a re-release of it i think in 2019 yeah um but it's one of like david cronenberg's i think best i think it's his masterpiece um basically james spader gets into a car crash and starts meeting a community of people that get really turned on by car crashes and like cars themselves yes. and it's this like very weird like body horror like Horny, porny kind of exploration of like trauma. Yeah, if you're and ramping up for Cronenberg's, like, oh, yeah, yes. like for his return to the body horror genre, which yes. I'm really excited about, yes. you should watch this. Yeah, I think it's like it's a must see from the column, I think, like, yeah. very foundational um, Cronenberg body horror. 100%. Check it out from here. Yeah, that's that, that movie. That movie's awesome. Yeah. I remember I saw that in the theater. I saw it in a very small theater in Helena, Montana when it was out in 1997. Yeah. My friend and I, who works here, we went and saw it, Waiting for Guffman, and then I was like, oh, I've heard of Crash that was shown next. And so we were like, let's, 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 go, let's, go, let's go see Crash. Yeah, it was a great double feature, and it was also one of the few times that I've seen like um, a lot of people walk out of a movie. It wasn't even yeah. a lot of people there. There were like maybe 15 people there, and I feel like seven or eight people like were like, no, not having it. And yeah. I mean, you know, I was it's like... It's pretty disturbing, <laughs> you know, and, and I think it really, it really goes there. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. I'm not afraid to like make you feel very uncomfortable. Like I just saw this by myself on like a tiny trailer in the middle of the woods. I was like in a residency. And I was like blushing and I was like by myself. <laughs> like, I was oh, like, oh my, my god, someone is watching me watch this. Yeah. But... Imagine watching it a little in a little a little tiny uh, theater about the size of this room and kind of looking around going like, oh, uh, hey, did you see that? Yeah. That was, well, that was weird, right? Yeah. Are real... People are leaving. <laughs> yeah. yeah what you, we're and all... getting into their car. Yeah. Okay. I know, right? They're going straight. Into their car and then going like, oh <laughs> man, <laughs> rubbing the leather drive. He had to have known that when he made it. Like, oh, you know, yeah. people are gonna watch this in the, in the cinema and go straight to their cars, and then they won't be able. They won't. They'll yeah. be incapable of not thinking about. Well, it's like it's saw. like driving through the suburbs after watching Gummo or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so very you guys are all gross. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of kind of disturbing picks from all of us. That's true, because Poison Ivy also, I mean, if you don't know what Poison Ivy is about, look it up. Yeah. But it's not, uh, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not totally unpleasant, but it is an erotic thriller that has a, a sort of a creepy bent to it. Yeah. I would say. Um, there's a murder. <laughs> there's murder. Well, I mean, the creepy stuff is more like the, uh, the, the sex stuff. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the murder is, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. People get murdered, whatever. Whatever. But, uh, it's, you know, the, it's the weird ambition. sex stuff, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's there's a good, uh, what did I call it? The, the white nightgown disease, the mysterious yes. illness that causes women to just be in white nightgowns. Oh my yeah. gosh, I love that. Yeah, that's that's my in Poison Ivy, there's a, cla there's, a, there's a classic case of that where she's just sick the whole time and she's yeah. out on her balcony in her, like, in her white nightgown being sick and you're like, why are you, what are you sick what exactly from? Are you sick? Yeah. Why are you outside? Don't go outside if you're sick. <laughs> Yeah, get back in look, there. Put some, put like a sweater on. Oh, not just a white nightgown. Yeah, it's raining or windy. <laughs> anyway, anyway, both great well, picks. Yeah, thank you guys for always like supporting our store yeah. and showing the masses the good shit. You Absolutely, know? Yeah. And, uh, good shit. Thanks for stopping by again. Anything else you want to plug? Anything besides uh, besides unstreamable? No, I would just say that we, people need to support Scarecrow because we want to keep renting movies. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Pony up. So you know? simple as that, you guys. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Well, well, thank awesome. you guys. Good thanks to see you. Cool beacon shirt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, your shirt's Mitsuki. cool too. That's cool too. Yeah. Oh, perfect. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, check out the Strangers on Stream. We'll call them. Hi. Thanks, guys. Thanks for stopping by again. What do we have next? next? Yeah. We have Corey. Oh, okay, cool. Corey's. Oh, okay. So okay. next we have, we have uh, coming up. We have a video from uh, Thanks, Corey Brewer, who, if you are a longtime fan of our telethons, you might remember from our very first one. Um, where he did a, a rundown of every movie in the Jalos section, yeah. um, and which was quite quite epic. And he'd already he'd done that as like a showing in the screening room too, um, for so 
he watched every movie in our Giallo section. Uh, he's a musician and a movie music obsessive too, and so this time I was like, hey, I want to do something else. And he's in, he didn't do every every movie in this, but he did uh, like a I think a ten minute, fifteen minute, something like that um, rundown of some of his favorite sort of underseen, underheard, underappreciated Morricone scores, calling it Mor Corey's Morricone Corner. Love it. And so here time. you go. Here's here's Corey, and it's I mean it's going to be Corey talking about some some great stuff from Morricone, and then you're going to get to hear some great music. So enjoy some more great music. Uh, I'm Corey J. Brewer. You might know me as the guy that watched every movie in Scarecrow's Giallo section. Uh, I was asked to put together a little something for the telethon, so here I am again. When Ennio Morricone passed away in 2020, there were inevitably a lot of top 10 lists, top 20 lists that came out listing the best Ennio Morricone soundtracks of all time. And it was always the same titles, just over and over again. Dollars Trilogy, Untouchables, Hateful Eight, Mission, etc. And nothing against those. They're all great. They're all legendary for a reason. Um, but he wrote like 300. So I'm going to highlight a few of them in what I'm calling Corey's Morricone Corner. Uh, first up, we got The Big Gun Down in 1968. Um, same year as Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. You can really tell. Morricone is on a hot one. Real good streak. It's cooking with gas. Um, plot and the soundtrack also sort of echo Good, the Bad, and the Ugly in their own way. Um, in great ways. Uh, Lee Van Cleef is in the starring role. It's got like ecstasy of gold moment. That's awesome. Uh, there's a three-way dual standoff. It's pretty amazing. And uh, plus the welcome edition of Meeves Navarro's BDSM Polycule Sex Ranch. You know, that does anything for you. And uh, there's a German guy that's got a dueling fetish, uh, unrelated to the sex ranch. Um, the opening track, Run Man Run, with vocals by Christy, is full on bonkers. It's just crazy. It's, it's, you kind of have to hear it to believe it. I'm probably playing it right now. Quentin Tarantino used the dual theme in Glorious Bastards when he introduces uh, Eli Roth's character. Uh, and you can find this in the Spaghetti Western section. Second up, we got Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion from 1970. It's a flimsy, fabulous tale of Dagmar Lysander being blackmailed into a BDSM scenario. It's not, it's not a theme, don't worry about it. Um, this is a classic, sexy Euro thriller and Ennio delivers just like a perfect score for it. It's gorgeous. This is the record that I go to when I'm like cooking dinner. Like I just throw it on. It's just so like, just like beautiful and delicate and then there's tension and it's got it all. And it's just like, uh, you can find this in the Psychotronic Room in the Giallo section. Orca, 1977. Jaw exploitation joint, one killer whale out for revenge against the people that killed his killer whale's uh, pregnant wife. Um, this killer whale just goes full on bonkers on a coastal town, just like taking out motherfuckers one by one, just blowing stuff up. It's amazing. It is bizarre. It is strangely touching. And Ennio Morricone delivers a score that is like so emotionally evocative. There's no reason that it needs to be this good. He just came with it and came with it hard. And it's fantastic stuff. Highly recommend it. Orca can be found in the Psychotronic Room in the Nature Run Amok section. Alright, 
Fear Over the City, 1975. Massively overlooked Euro crime, uh, starring the god Paul Belmondo, R.I.P., uh, tracking a serial killer and doing some stunts that look very dangerous. Like, really making you uncomfortable looking dangerous stuff like he's running across like rooftops and the way that it's shot you can tell it's just like if that motherfucker fell you'd be done uh if you've not seen it i cannot recommend it enough it's currently only available on pal 2 disc but you've got a laptop with like a vlc player in it right right um if you don't pull it together i mean just find an old ratty one that just like has one in it it's not easy. People are broke. For a movie this rad, uh, Morricone like steps up to the plate. It's full of like dizzy, woozy tension strings and like detective sounds and like action sounds and like it's like it's just got all of the all the vibes and all the flavor that you would want for like a Euro crime adventure cop story. Uh, you can find it in the foreign section under France. All right. What have you done to Solange? 1972. Now, I don't recommend this one a lot because it is a sleazy slice of sleazy sleaze and for my tastes, it has just a little too much crotch stabbings. Like, not my cup of tea. However, if that sort of thing doesn't bother you, uh, enjoy this tale of schoolgirls getting murdered to the tune of one of Morricone's finest thriller scores. It's on par with Bird with the Crystal Plumage. We all love Bird with the Crystal Plumage, right? That's why I'm not talking about it in this list, because we all love Bird with the Crystal Plumage. This one's as good. Highly recommend. You can find this in the murder mystery suspense room under Edgar Wallace. Grand Slam, 1967. Globe trotting diamond heisters. We got Janet Lee, Edward G. Robinson, Klaus Kinski. Super fun stuff. The score, it's playful, it's almost like Henry Mancini-esque. It's got uh, lots of horns, farty keyboards. Uh, if, a 1970, or if a 1967 heist film, globe-trotting heist film, with an Ennio Morricone score sounds good to you, this is exactly what you're looking for. This is it. This is Bullseye. And uh, you can find it in the Murder Mystery Suspense Room under Capers, which is right around the corner from the Edgar Wallace section in the... Danger Diabolic, 1968. Mario Bava's maximalist kaleidoscope comic book adaptation that never slows down and never stops delivering the goods. This is just a mod opera just cranked to the top. It just has everything and lots of it. Um, it's kind of got sort of the same set design energy as Planet of the Vampires, where it's just everything is just big and huge and modern and crazy. It's so good. Uh, Morricone's soundtrack matches that energy, elevates the vibe. Rumor has it that the tapes were destroyed in a fire, uh, which is why the soundtracks never like officially come out and a lot of the bootlegs even have like dialogue on top of it like it's just ripped from this soundtrack um, you can find it in the director section under Bob thank you for joining me in this uh, installment Possibly only installment of Corey's Morricone Corner. Bye. Thanks.
was a uh, video by our own Alicia Betty. So thanks so much for making that. Thank you. The slideshow of that for those Joe Bob quotes. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Now I want to watch Nude on the Moon. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have some shout outs to make. Yeah, yeah. We got some more some more stuff. We are shouting out Barry. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dylan says, Long live Scarecrow, the institution of cinema joy. All right. And then... Yeah. We got a long, long we got, boy. We have a we have a pretty long one from from Jacob from Jacob Vesser, who I think is a, one of our uh, regular rent by mail customers. Yeah. To remind people that you can anywhere in the country you can rent uh, our stuff uh, through our rent by mail program. Yeah. So that's all the information of that is yeah, on, on our website. Yeah, you don't have to be in so. Seattle to rent from Scarecrow Video. And that's nope. also what makes us so great and where your dollars are going is to help make the rent by mail program a little more accessible, yep. easy to, to do, yep. and so that people all over the country can rent movies from Scarecrow Video. Exactly. So that is also where your donations are going, and we're super grateful for everything. Exactly. So, so and on that note, uh, this, Jacob sent us a nice long message, so yes. uh, I'm going to read the first part. Go ahead. So, hi Kevin and Emily, and Rich if he's around. <laughs> He is. Thanks for doing the live stream and the Viva show. I worked nearby several years ago, so I used to come into the store often. Now that my partner and I live in an area without a video store anywhere close, Viva is basically appointment YouTube for us to get vicarious video store experience. I love it. As long as I have it, my partner's a neon... Neon artist. Neon artist. Like it makes neon signs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, neon artist. Okay, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> great, great window sign, by the way. Thanks. And is attending a glass conference in Tacoma next week, so we'll be able to swim by the store during cool. the trip. Excited that you responsibly buy some physical media to oh, show yeah. my thankfulness for the hard work that's been put into the show on behalf of us folks that live on the opposite coast. Yes. As far as spreading the word about video store contemporaries, a storefront for the online distributor Grindhouse Video has just opened in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I'm looking forward to paying a visit during an upcoming trip in June. The store is a one-man operation, so happy to spread the word to others who might be watching close to Knoxville and want to go check it out to support the hard work being done at Grindhouse Video. The website advertises new and used 4K, Blu-ray, DVD, VHS, Laserdisc, VCD, HD DVD, and even some CED. They also have a wide assortment of retro magazines, toys, props, t-shirts, and more. There are thousands of items in the store that are not on the website. No rentals as far as I know, but that just means I'll continue getting a lot of use out of the Scarecrow RBM program. So people near Knoxville, go check out Grindhouse Video in person at 7212 Kingston Pike or online at grindhousevideo.com. Local video stores should absolutely be supported if you live in or near a community that's lucky enough to still have one. Thanks again for all the entertainment for keeping the home video ship sailing. 
Jacob and DJ and our dog Vincent Price watching from Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> dog named Vincent Price. I love that. Wait, what kind of dog is it? Well, anyway, um, you Jacob, look. send us a photo of your dog. <laughs> you can either send it to Scarecrow, Scarecrow.com, or Viva at Scarecrow.com. Viva at Scarecrow.com. I think we may have seen a video, a photo of this dog, or else it's another Price? Vincent Price. I don't know that dog. we. I don't know that we. Really? Maybe. Well, if you have sent us one, then I I have then. Well, anyway, send us another picture yeah. of Vincent Price, the dog. Um, Jacob makes an excellent point about uh, not living here and being able to still access Scarecrow's plethora of titles. Because as much as we would love to have a Scarecrow in every single state, we don't. No. And it's it's thanks to your donations and every dollar that you give us during these telethons. That's why we can mail DVDs and Blu-rays to you guys. like and mail them to Jacob all the way on the opposite coast. Like, yeah. it's because of you. So you're not only supporting us as a store, but you're supporting other people who would love to have access to these titles. So we would really love your help today in reaching our goal of $25,000. $25, Every little dollar counts. Um, just a reminder, any sort of donation will enter you in a raffle to win a private rental at Arc Lodge in Columbia City. Um, amazing prestige room is amazing. You can go with 14 of your friends and uh, you know, eat popcorn. The chocolate popcorn's coming back. It's coming back. Sl like Icy's, he said. And, great. you know, watch movies with your friends there. You'll also just be supporting our store. Uh, if you want, you can get uh, you get one of these t-shirts. It's one edition. It's $150 uh, donation. And these are limited edition, and they will be normal size t-shirts, not this uh, size t-shirts when they are finished. So they will be just regular t-shirts, not a little cardboard thing. And at the end of the day, we're going <laughs> to auction this little cardboard thing out. Ooh, we're going to autograph And we will it. autograph it for you. But we're going to save that for, like, when we really need to pull up that's stuff for later, later yeah, on. For later on. Um, also, I mentioned that if you donate at the $25 level and you include your favorite movie, me and Kevin will give you a movie recommendation based Based on that, but you oh, have yeah. to put it in the note, or else we won't know. Twenty-five dollars, or yeah, just a twenty-five dollar one. And yeah. and donate literally however much you want. Yeah. And I will. I and, and send us a message saying you want me to. Uh, you want me to write my your name on the on the little whiteboard because because uh, his handwriting's so bad you won't believe it until you see you it. You will not believe it. It's like a it's like a freak show over here. <laughs> yeah. So donate any amount and say you would like Kevin to, to write your name on the whiteboard and we will have that happen. Or any note you want me to write on the whiteboard. Yeah. Twenty five dollars <laughs> will give you a, a recommendation based on a movie that you put in the comments. Perfect. Um, um, yeah. yeah. It just but just keep the donations rolling in. We slowed down a tiny bit there. We were pretty we were heading we were hitting up and we slowed down a tiny bit there. Is that like mid we're not. You know what it is? You know, like sometimes lunchtime. I'm working. Yeah. I mean, it's past lunchtime though, because it's like three. Oh my but god. When I'm, work when I'm working, I will get into the slump around now, and you know what I've discovered really helps is like having an iced coffee around this time. Oh, okay. So okay. maybe you guys need to go out and caffeinate. Yeah. Maybe uh, you need to eat some food or something, and then and then open your hearts, open your minds, and open your wallets, and help us out today at the Spring Telethon. We have like a lot of show left. For we got you. a lot of and, show. I mean, I'm not. I don't want to like. I'm not spoiling anything. But there are going to be some big surprises later on, and I don't want people to. I don't want you to check out early because but we'll the end only of the show have is the surprises be crazy. if you earn it. Absolutely, you gotta <laughs> so keep. You gotta keep show giving. Us you spread love the us. word. Show us you I mean, yeah, share, share, share it on social media if you think you know some people who oh, might please. be just hanging out at home, not doing anything. Maybe today. you haven't seen a good friend in a while. Why not invite him over and watch the telephone together? Exactly. That yeah. might be fun, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think yeah. that could be fun. Get him on there. Let's let's uh, let's see some, let's see some love. Oh, and thanks to again, thanks to Corey. Uh, for that awesome video on yeah. rare what, what a wealth stores. Of knowledge. Again, just awesome. And thanks uh, to Alicia Betty for putting together that awesome slideshow. And coming up next. Oh, yeah. Right about now. Right about now. We have a really uh, fun game. You're in this. Yeah, if you guys want to see me absolutely <laughs> slay at Filmly Feud, which is a family feud film themed game. Scarecrow versus Grand Illusion, then your wishes have come true because that's what we got coming up next. And so yeah, watch that. We're, it's really fun. Yep. Welcome to Filmly Feud, part of Scarecrow's video's spring fundraiser livestream. Today, we have two teams facing off 
uh, to uncover the top answers chosen by you, uh, the Scarecrow community. I'm joined on my right by the Scarecrow team, and I'm joined right over here with the, the Grand Illusion team. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm Dominic. I'm Katie. Nice to meet you all. And how about over here? I'm Megan. I'm Emily, and we're going to kick some ass. <laughs> That's very confident of you. I like that. I'm Jamie, and I don't approve that language. Well, give me a kiss, darling. Very good. All right. We'll be playing the game Family Feud style. One member from each team will face off and buzz in to guess the top answers from our survey results. Whoever gets the most popular answer wins control of the board uh, for their team, who will uncover all five top answers. Top answers are worth 30 points, second most popular worth 25 points, and so on. Wrong answers earn a strike, and after three strikes, the other team uh, has the chance to steal. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins and will take home a glorious prize. Before we get started, we'd like to also thank Max Paz Derek from Leo Buckham Video, whose Fantastic Feud and Fantastic Fest served as the inspiration for today's event. Woo! Is everyone ready? Yes! Yeah. Let's get started! Let's go round one! All right, folks. Oh. All right. <laughs> Woo! Woo! All right. All right, let's go. Name a critically acclaimed movie that you can't stand. Jamie, let's go. The Shawshank Redemption. Show me Shawshank Redemption. Uh, Katie. Avatar. Show me Avatar. Uh, oh, my goodness. Emily. You get a guess now. It's not what I would say, but I'm sure that there are some stupid idiots out there who would say Titanic. Survey says... <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Name a critically acclaimed movie that you can't stand on. Critically acclaimed Critically acclaimed <laughs> We don't know. <laughs> we are not critics. Love it. Titanic. She just said <laughs> Titanic. <laughs> That's what you get. Pay attention. Megan, mm. name a critically acclaimed movie that you cannot stand. Forrest Gump. Show me Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh! Okay, okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Megan got the number one answer. What's your next guess? I'm going to say Inception. Do we have Inception? <laughs> Jamie? Uh, my answer is The English Patient. Ooh. 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 Do we have The English Patient? <laughs> <laughs> oh. How about Bridget Jones' Diary? Ooh. Sh can we see Bridget Jones' Diary, please? <laughs> Three strikes! Grand Illusion team, you get the chance okay, to on. steal. Hold on, hold on. We gotta think for a minute. Let's like, go. Okay, so the three of you need to name a critically acclaimed movie goodness. that you cannot stand. Let's go for round two. All right, let's go. Let's go. My way right here, Jesus All right. Christ. All right, question number two. <laughs> Name the best movie with the word bad in the title. Emily, let's go. Bad Boys. Show me Bad Boys. Uh, oh. Bad Lieutenant for the call. Show me Bad Lieutenant, not Port of Call, New Orleans. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, Jamie. What was the question again? Name the best movie with the word bad in the title. Uh, bad Teacher. Bad Teacher survey says... Uh, 
What? Oh. All right, Daniel. Name the best movie with the word bad in the title. I'm going to have to go bad, Lieutenant. Show me bad, Lieutenant. All right. Excellent work, Daniel. Ooh, respectable. All right, Katie. Bad Santa. Show oh. me bad Santa. Wow. Excellent work, folks. Now, it's all on you. The best movie with the word bad in the title. It's all on me. The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Let's see the Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Oh, excellent yeah. work, my yeah, okay. friends. Okay. Grand Illusion team with a big score here. 71 points. Let's go. Daniel, you have another chance to add some more points to the total. Um... <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, that's, that's covered in mind. Um, that is incorrect. <laughs> Time's running out. Um, Michael Jackson's bad. Is that a movie? All right, get the game. Jackson's bad. That's cool. That's a big. Oh, that was a good. Movie. That's a cool uh, answer, though. We award you a point. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna go with Bad News Bears. Oh. Show me Bad News Bears! Come on! Oh. Yeah. Excellent work! Uh, we are gonna be worried. Are you gonna fill out the board here for us? I mean, are we on two strikes? You are on two strikes yeah, indeed. So okay. Let's uh, go, Dominic. So they have a chance to steal. So, and it's the number five. Oh okay. god! So like four people thought of this. You're only on one strike. Great. Oh, you're on one strike? Oh, yeah. thank God. So you're going to screw it up. <laughs> uh, you are on one strike. Bad. Bad. Can you, sorry, so bad Santa. Sorry, so... Oh, bad grandpa? <gasps> Do we have bad grandpa? <laughs> yeah. Right up. Okay. <laughs> okay let's it took you long enough last time. Let's see how long <laughs> this one goes for. Um... Just kidding. Hey. <laughs> just take a letter of the alphabet and just yeah. go through it in your head. Uh, <laughs> make up something you'll see. Make it. <laughs> Billy Bad, is that a movie? Billy Bad. Billy, Billy, Bad. Bad. Billy Bad. Let's have Billy Bad. <laughs> Uh, oh, really Scarecrow bad. team has a slight chance to steal some points here. Emily, what, 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 what are we going to do? Bad Day of Black Rock. Do we have <laughs> Bad Day of Black Rock? Is that the title? Yes, please. Yeah! Yeah! Six points to Scarecrow. Yeah, this is fixed. And, this too. <laughs> and you steal what the, the hell points. Is that movie? Uh, I don't know. I didn't that answer. is quite the coup. Oh. Oh. Right there, You're welcome. Thanks for doing all the work for the Scarecrow team, Grand Illusion people. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, are we ready for question number three? All right, are we ready for round three? Woo! Excuse me, sir. All right, question number three. Name a movie robot you'd most like to be friends with. Oh. Megan! Iron Giant. Show me the Iron Giant. Hey, the Iron Wait, Giant's on top of it. Daniel, you got a chance to get number one. What's your guess? Uh, I'm going to guess Robocop. Show me Robocop. <laughs> All right. That's a good guess. Let's go, Scarecrow team. Emily, name a movie robot you'd most like to be friends with. Can I have a microphone? <laughs> Bicentennial. <laughs> <laughs> Survey says Bicentennial Man. Oh. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, can name a movie robot you most like to be friends with. Uh, uh, I, Hal 9000, he seems cool. <laughs> Do we have Hal 9000, he seems cool? Oh. Megan, it's all riding on your shoulders. If you miss this one, Grand Illusion has a chance to steal. Tell me another Damn. movie robot. You'd most like to be friends with. Uh, Chappie. <laughs> I am Chappie. Chappie. I am alive. Show me Chappie. Oh, right. Grand Illusion team. Time to steal. I know. Hold on. 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 Hold on.
R2-D2. Oh. Let me see R2-D2. Let's go. Send it, R2-D2. The number one response was Wally. Response number three was Johnny Five from the film mm -hmm. Short Circuit. And number five, the T-800. Oh, it's a Terminator. All right. We have to win. All right, folks, the running total for the time being, Scarecrow Team, 117 points, Grand Illusion Team, 57 points, Grand Illusion Team definitely needs a win in this round to secure their victory. Let's go, folks. Question number four. Let's go. Put my beard down and we'll answer these questions. Question number four. Name the worst movie to watch on a first date. Ooh. Jamie! Audition. Can I see Audition? <laughs> audition! Yes. 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 Do you have a chance to get a top yes. one? On a first date? The worst movie to watch on a first date. Microwave Murderer? <laughs> Excellent movie. No Microwave Murderer, unfortunately. Alright, Emily. Name the worst movie to watch on a first date. Rosemary's Baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we have Rosemary's Baby? Oh. Very disappointing. <laughs> Megan, the worst movie to watch on a first date. How about David Cronenberg's Crash? David Cronenberg's Crash? Personally, I think that's a great movie yeah. to watch on a first date. Can we see David Cronenberg's Crash? Uh. No! Jamie, you got the last chance to save it before the steal. Let's go. Name the worst movie to watch on a first date. Kids? Ooh. Larry Clark's <laughs> Disturbing Kids. Do we have kids? <laughs> no! Okay. Grand Illusion team, this is your chance to secure your victory. Let's go. I'm not going to save it. Let's go, Grand Illusion team. What is your answer? List. <laughs> Do we have Schindler's <laughs> List? No! Oh, I we did that oh, All right, other answers. Number one, Sallow. Oh, oh. Number two, Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, Antichrist. Oh, really? Willem Dafoe, Big Dick Energy. And number five, of course, Human Centipede. Oh. Let's do one more round. Right. Final oh. round for oh. Family oh. Feud. Yeah, that means you're up. Yeah. Oh, you're up. Mm. Okay, Let's go, folks. Okay. <laughs> uh. All right. Question number five. The final question. Name the worst James Bond. <laughs> Emily. Disclaimer: I don't think I've seen like any James Bond movies, <laughs> and I'd say immaterial. Octopussy. Can we see Octopussy? Oh, oh, come on. Let's go, Grand know. Illusion no, team. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great ball. I'm just, I'm just getting out of your way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what uh, is the worst James Bond film? Um, Tomorrow Never Dies. Can we see Tomorrow Never Dies? No. All right, Jamie, you have a chance to save this. Let's go. Name the worst James Bond film. Die Another Day. Can we see Die Another Day, please, survey says? Die another day it is! Yes. Megan, let's keep the streak going. Name the worst James Bond film. Goldfinger. Can I see Goldfinger? Goldfinger is pretty good. Emily. Give me an empty Do you know another James Bond title? I think you do. It's called. Casino Royale. <laughs> Survey says Casino Royale. I like that movie, it's not. <laughs> I know you guys. I forgot, I don't know those titles. Jamie, you have one strike left. Spectra? You mean Spectre? That's what I said. Spectre. Indeed it is. Can I see Spectre up, please? <laughs> All right, Grand Illusion hey, 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 hey. team. Let's right. go. So we got our guest. All right, Grand Illusion team has their guest. What is it? On Her Majesty's Secret Service. May I please? That's a title? May I please I see so. On Her Majesty's Secret Service? 
Oh, oh no. no! How was that not on there? Didn't think so. It's because it's the best one. Uh, <laughs> one, the good one, the bad one. Uh, other choices oh. remain. Number five, The World Is Not Enough. Mm. Very good movie. Didn't I see that? Uh, Quantum of Solace, deeply underappreciated. Okay. A View to a Kill with Christopher Walken as the bad guy. What is wrong with you no people? And <laughs> number two, Duran Duran's Moonraker. Uh, if you good. think Moonraker is bad, uh, you can come and have a fight with me Moonraker. right now. Answer these <laughs> questions. These bastards. All right, 195 points right. to 57. I feel like that clinches the victory for the Scarecrow <laughs> team. Yeah. It was great. Good job. <laughs> we did great. Good job, though, guys. My next card's blank. <laughs> this is bullshit. Thanks to everyone for watching <laughs> Film Fan Feud. This is where the Filmly Feud. Thanks for every. Let me start over. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for watching the Filmly Feud and for tuning into Scarecrow's live stream. If you haven't contributed yet, we really need your support. Scarecrow donors have kept offering the world's largest and best video archive, and we need your help to keep it growing and thriving. Thanks again for your support of Scarecrow Video, and enjoy the rest of today's program. Woo! Thank you! Thank you! Filmly Feud, everybody! For watching, and I hope you enjoyed Filmly Feud. Good job, Emily. Thank you. I think Great I job, did Team quite Scarecrow. well, and I do still think Bicentennial Man is a good answer. And, uh, good job, good job, Team uh, Grand Illusion. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, we may see more, a, a little more Filmly Feud later on tonight, so don't go anywhere and stick around. Also, uh, weird, there was this uh, teaser for a uh, the Bigfoot versus Yeti, so stick around for that. There will final battle. It's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty, it's gonna be pretty interesting. It's gonna be pretty. Uh, Pretty fierce, uh, oh. fierce battle here. So you don't want to miss that. Um, uh, keep those donations rolling in. Absolutely. We are making our way through the day, uh -huh. and what time we is it now? have uh, we have a goal of twenty five thousand dollars. And any amount helps. If you're even thinking about maybe just like five dollars, ten dollars, literally, it all helps. Mm -hmm. You are the ones who keep Scarecrow going, and you're the ones who keep it accessible to everyone um, all over the country. So exactly. thank you and thank you in the future for and, your donations. And for anybody who's enjoying this show, I mean, all the money helps, helps us do fun stuff like this. Yeah. Like the next thing, we got another band. We do. More more local live music. Um, follow us so over. So let's go over there. Let's do it. Yeah. You're on the move. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Austin D.
This is a song called The Garden.
got just a couple more. Um, we are called Steam, and over the winter I got to record a bunch of songs, and um, those first two songs were from the stuff we recorded, and these last two songs are also going to be the ones that uh, we recorded. So this is a song uh, from my mom. I love you, mom, if you're watching. It's called The Year After. <laughs> teacher, Miss Hinkle, because she said that this was too redundant to play at graduation, and so I uh, 
I'm going to play it now, and this one's for you, Miss Hinkle, if you're watching. <laughs> um, thank you, Scarecrow, for having us. This is um, a really cool opportunity to be a part of this fundraiser. Um, and it was really dope to get to play with Soft Boiled and then Dean Johnson today being here later. This is so cool. Um, cool, yeah, we got one more song. This is called Letterbox. Thank you for uh, giving us your time and your attention. We really appreciate it. Holy cow. <laughs> yep. Here we are again, you guys. Here we are again. Um, and we have a little update. Just a little update. It's a little update. Um, I see big things happen. I see big things in our future, but we have a little update for now. It's $10,778. Um, we are about halfway through our telethon today, but we're not quite halfway, halfway, to, halfway our to our goal. Almost. We want to stay on track. We would love to stay on track for our $25,000 goal, and I do think it's possible. Absolutely. And every, every dollar counts. Um, I know a lot of you are watching the stream and you're like, I already donated, yeah. or whatever. And it's like, that's fine, that's cool. Why don't you uh, just like 
share it with your friends or family, post it on your social media would be really helpful. We're Absolutely. really trying to get that push to our goal. Let's read some comments from some people yeah. real quick. We got Julia. Julia donated. Thank you. Thank you. Tom says, Viva Physical Media. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Katie, shout out to Katie, shout out to Brandon. Eric says, love you, Scarecrow. Here is some money. <laughs> That's what we want to hear. Thank you. <laughs> me, Eric. And uh, from Sophie, oh, from my dear Sophie, who is over in France right now. He's like, what? You're still up? This is super late over there. What? How yeah, late is it? It's pretty late. It's like 1 o'clock. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's because you're partying, you know? Uh, you're partying way to go, dolls. Thank you, Sophie. 